Hello, everyone. Welcome to Rising Through the Darkness Purgatory here on HighVibe.TV. I am David Palmer, the Leo King, the CEO of HighVibe.TV, and of course, your friendly celebrity astrologer. I appreciate you all so much for being here as Rising Through the Darkness was something that I thought was going to be a one-off. And it was in November of 2017, and it was actually based upon multiple channeled messages I had gotten from Spirit, the Palladians, about a really weird time that we were going to be going through. And believe it or not, yes, 2020 was very weird. And 2021 even seems weirder. And that's why I'm here for this moment. Because if you've seen Rising Through the Darkness or not, When it comes to astrology, when it comes to the timing of events in life, we're right in the middle. And purgatory is very much being stuck in the middle. And all of us are trying to find whether it's a way out or just a way through. And we've asked everybody on High Vibe especially, you know, what are the things in life that you're really concerned about that you would like to know astrologically? And I found a way, ironically enough, to solve all of those questions for people and answer them through this presentation and this deep look into what I'm calling rising through the darkness purgatory. Now there was age of deception that I did in 2016 and that was about the ages that we're in. And even though you're not going to see too much talk about it, I will bring it up. But this is all new content. There might be a little bit that maybe some of what you've heard, but I really made a point to go into completely new places and to also give you this presentation as a presentation and a lecture because some people want just the information and they want it faster and they want it quicker. Now, a lot of you here are for astrology and there is definitely astrology in here, and you're going to be hearing me talk about astrology. But I didn't want to bore you all with going through charts and charts and charts, as I can't even tell you how many charts I've ran in my life or how many times a week we do charts here in High Vibe. So there's a lot more context to why I am giving the astrology and the predictions and the horoscope, and more importantly, just the guidance through this time. Now... What we're going to be covering today is how did we end up here? I mean, especially here in 2021, Rising Through the Darkness didn't just show up randomly. Now, if you didn't know, and if you have watched Rising Through the Darkness, I used this exact same projection screen. And I actually, in Rising Through the Darkness, had a Leo King banner to my left and a Leo King banner to my right. And I used these three blocks as if they were blocks of time. So the block that was before the main screen that is up here was 2012 through 2017 in that five-year block, which was I called the dark night of the soul. And especially going deeper into the 2012 phenomenon or the Mayan prophecy, 2018 through 2023 was rising through the darkness, which would be this screen here, which... If I were to take this screen and really think about it, at 2018, right at the start, Saturn went into Capricorn, and all the way through 2023, we have Saturn from Capricorn into Aquarius, which of course is Saturn's home the whole time. And not only with all the events that I'm going to talk about and go through, which a lot of them, most of you know if you're astrologers or you like astrology, but it's ironic that in 2021, if you were to take the middle of this screen as the block of 2018 through 2023, we literally are in the middle. But if you were to go and imagine another one of these blocks in front of or forward in the future from 2023 to 2028, we're, we're in the middle, you know? That's what's the creepiest part about it all. We're in the middle of this cycle and we're in the middle of the long cycle in which I'm talking about. But there are massive events that happen that predate 2020 that have been building up for a very long time. 
I mean, I think the most important one, and I've shown it before, is Pluto. Pluto is a very weird planet. It's not a planet that acts like all the other planets. I mean, you could say that about Uranus and how it's like, fuck you, I'm going to go upside down and I'm going to be unpredictable, literally, with even, I don't know if you realize in the science in the last two weeks, Uranus is actually flaring, like how the, the, the sun flares. How funny that the sun and Uranus are the opposites, Leo and Aquarius, and of course Uranus would find a way to flare. But with Pluto, it's about the way that Pluto's orbit works, how it's above the ecliptic of our solar system, and then it rises down below. And so if you were to watch especially since, let's say, the Declaration of Independence, and you watch the 244-year cycle, half of that cycle is above the ecliptic and of the solar system, not the Earth. And then the other goes down below. That's why Pluto rules the underworld. And so as Pluto was approaching that ecliptic line and the galactic center, over this last decade was when Saturn and when Jupiter were all coming together and they all formed together in 2020 and while Pluto went down into the underworld. So it's almost like Pluto took down the two biggest planets that met on December 21st of 2020, Jupiter and Saturn. So astrologically, this was all predicted. This was all, I mean, for me, it was like, the one thing that every astrologer or anybody who wants to be an astrologer has to learn is to trust the astrology. And to trust it means the confidence that you must have to make the prediction. So we just didn't end up here because of this micro, like this government did this and this backstory, because I'm going to help us realize that we're looking too much at the reality of things including myself, I will, I will admit it. It's easy because, you know, we've been trapped in what I'm going to call us our purgatory, and we're going to have to realize that it's what's behind the veil. It's energies that are not what are even talked about on truther channels. Now, it does formulate and manifest in physical form, but we're never going to figure anything out. We're never, we're never going to see the things that we want to see changed in our life if we're going to continue to just be looking at this truth or that truth of in the truth or community, it's got to go deeper than that. Now, not to say that I don't believe in the truth or community because I fucking am so proud of so many light workers out there and so many people that are putting the truth out, which I think is the most important thing. And if you notice in what I'm going to show you and through history and through time and more importantly, where we're at astrologically, Truth is the only thing that matters in life. And truth is freedom because information is light. Disinformation, which is just not giving you information, is dark. Now, what are we going to cover today? Well, number one, 2020, will it ever end? Does it feel like it's ever going to end or does it feel like there's even years anymore? I've said this before, but I have my own horoscope prediction and I have my own thesis and hypothesis I guess you could say about that I don't believe the idea of time and how we look at time and how this year's different because it clicks into January 1st is working anymore because it never did work it worked in our brains it worked in the way that we conceptualize reality that reality is gone. The rare alignments of Saturn and Pluto. Of course, we just had it in 2020. We had it in 1517 into 1518. And we had it into 1284. And there's a lot that we're going to go backwards in. But mainly, we're going to go into the last time it could have even been exactly like we saw in 2020, which was in 1284 into 1285. Super rare astro astrology in general. 
it's more than just what I'm talking about with the planets. It's the fact that we're discovering things in space that isn't even being talked about. We're discovering things in our cosmology that haven't even been brought up yet because we are in such a weird time where people are afraid or I don't know why science forgot about cosmology, but the cosmology is changing. And that means super rare astrology is more than aspects of planets, but cosmology that seems to always shift. But I'm going to get to the root of is cosmology really ever shifting? Or is it that we have to realize that cosmology is the true understanding of just the divine? And that is unfathomable. It is unalienable. You cannot change it. And it's unwavering. What is purgatory? And I'm going to go into the Dante connection. Of course, he's the one who did pretty much make purgatory a big deal for the church and everywhere else. And pretty much you think purgatory, you think Dante, or some people think purgatory and they just think Catholic church. It don't matter. The Dante connection is beyond what I, most people even realize. And that's what we're going to cover today as well. My main point that we're going to cover today that I feel is the most important is this foreign slash artificial energy that is surrounding us and the field of the reality and the soul collective consciousness that we are in. Now, I know a lot of people are going to want to get my info on that one, but that one, that, that one's going to be a little crazy, but you, you're here with the Leo King, so thank you. And that kind of, if you just, you know, without even going into all the slides yet and to the presentation, but of course, what would come after that? What is the big distraction? Some people in the media are calling it the big lie. There must be something that is really serious going on that we're not seeing or even know about or even a truth or community isn't even talking about. Because when you have something so bad, the ultimate lie is to completely create another story. I was talking to some chick about dating through a dating app. I'll never forget this story. And she was telling me that, like, you know, when she was hanging out with some guy, like, he's, like, getting text messages. He's like, oh, you know, I got, that's, that's my sister calling. And it was another chick. It's like the distraction of, you know, oh, it's your family. Like, I understand. Go take the phone call. Right? It's like the ultimate distraction while there's something else going on that you don't know what's really going on. You can assume if you're intelligent or maybe even intuitive, like, oh, he's probably talking to a chick. And that's an easy one. But you have to remember, if I were to go to my grandmother... I'm going to see this weekend, ironically enough. And uh, I got a phone call, and it was some chick that wanted to bang. <laughs> and I told her, it's work calling, man. I got a lot going on in my life right now. She's going to automatically assume that. I'm not going to be telling her that, like, did you pick up the 12-inch dildo and the fucking lube and the cock ring? See you at 10. <laughs> split in the collective is related to a split in more places that many don't see. I know the government stuff, the Republican, the Democrat, the left, the right, China, America, Russia, Ukraine. I mean, I can go on for hours. Although I've been talking about this Uranus and Taurus and how allies and weird things in the world and foreign governments and all these things happen. But that's just one little split. We can 
go on all day about the split, but I'm going to show you what the split's really about. The secret to discovering your own personal truth while getting as best as a grasp on what the truth really is. So I'm going to uncover the secrets to help you understand the closest we can as a truth, because the truth is always going to be subjective, of course, but at least we can get as close as we can. And that's what Uranus represents is like, it's funny because it's always got, you know, the God of air, which has also been the God or the, the, the God of the heavens but meaning like the gatekeeper to the heavens, Uranus is, because it's so close to God, at least it could hear if God's changing his clothes or if he's upset, because at least, you know, we can get that close to truth. Like we can hear God behind the curtain. We could see God's uh, the shadow in many ways. We could feel God's energy, but we don't know what's exactly behind that door fully. And that's just truth. But we can at least get ourselves to that place opposed to being the farthest from it. And there's a lot more in this, but I just wanted to cover some bullet points. One of the last bullet points I put on is, because, and this goes in a lot with what people were asking on High Vibe, and there's a lot more to it, but how to better your life and relationships and how to live a thriving life in this weird time and how to better connect with spirituality. So this presentation is combining more than this, but really taking these subjects and these matters and how important this time is, and especially as the biggest bullet point, which is, will it ever end? And that's the number one question I get, and I laugh because <laughs> I look at my age of deception, I look at rising through the darkness in 2017, and, and, and I answer that question so many times. I have that slide up, and here I am again five years later, same slide, will it ever end? And people keep asking that. I'm going to give a different answer to all that today. So now there's a quote of mine, but divine sovereignty, and I said it last night in my life, divine sovereignty is ultimate immunity from the dark. Now in this picture, in many ways, this is how sin or the energy that takes us away from the divine comes at us. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk because I just kind of want to show this stuff. But, you know, you have, you have many things in this picture that are parts of sin that if you look at this picture, he's reaching for truth. And he's subjected and he's surrounded by sin, envy. I mean, there's so many things. This is Botticelli, by the way, who did this. But I think that to go into this before we go into some really crazy info and to some really intense info that we actually, um, that we're not afraid to, to look at it. Um, Now, oh. So as you can see here, and if we could put this up on the screen, Craig, for them instead of this way. You can, you can see that we are at a place to where he is surrounded. He's getting told things in his head. This is Envy right here as she's beautiful and he's in tattered clothing. Oh, man, this, this is always so much fun. All right. And um, if you notice this woman here, she's holding up a, a flame, but she's also dragging a body. And I kind of hit it there but she's dragging somebody who's looking up and there's all this looking up towards the divine you know and and truth and divine are extremely connected but you can reach for truth in life 
but just reaching for truth is one thing. But one thing I notice in the spiritual truth or community that's going on right now that's not bad or negative, I just think that it's, a, it's an interesting point to take in for everybody for a second, is why are they not talking about the divine much in the truth or community? It's just the truth or community. So it brings out a lot of truth and it brings out a lot of conspiracies and that I, that I totally am on point with. And I think a lot of us here on High Vibe are. But there's a lot of weird shit going down and we're not being told a lot of things. And guess what? That's correct. But how come there is nobody also saying, why aren't you looking above all this stuff? Which, of course, in Botticelli, this is Venus and her... Birth, the birth of Venus, but her beauty and her grace and her love of balance, harmony, creation, which is all embodiment. And also, you know, it's been taken away also by the Catholic Church and stuff to make Venus this, you know, the, the, the morning star as Lucifer and this dark, I don't even want to say his name, but as this dark thing. When yet, everybody that practices this art, not everybody, but let's say a majority of people, whether it's astrology or going into the true divine, which they call a cult, which I'm just going to start calling it divine because, I mean, a cult is just hidden information and stuff. But if anything, we're not doing a cult work because we're bringing it all out into the open. We're doing divine work. And I think that people need to realize at this moment in this time, this is what this is. This is divine work now. This isn't about the occult. This is about realizing that you can reach for truth and truth will come and save you in this reality. But without the other force of divinity, you won't have your total immunity. And I used immunity because people think herd immunity is possible through just getting a shot and then get back in my car and fucking roll through my life. <laughs> Let's see how that one goes. I just put up more videos, two people in the last day, of people having seizures in their car, and also uh, a head of state, I've forgotten what country I was driving here to do this presentation, was standing up and fucking fell over. And I don't know if y'all remember, the first week that the shots came out, guess what? Remember that nurse? When she went up there and she just had gotten it and then she passed out and had a, that's something that Fauci is not talking about. And today Fauci got in a fight on April 15th of 2021 when we're doing this about liberty and saying, I'm not basically saying I'm not concerned about liberty. I'm not concerned with your freedom and wouldn't answer the question of whenever people will get their liberties back. That is the dark. I've used this slide before, but I've changed it. But the present time, what is the battle now? Of course, we talk about red pill and blue pill. But to me, Morpheus, in I think it was 97 when this came out, this movie, you know, and to where we're at in 2021, I think this red pill, blue pill thing is, is, is a lot more enhanced and more of a newer version of a red pill and a newer version of a blue pill. Because that blue pill could be the old you and the old awakening you. Because this red pill is asking you to go deeper down the rabbit hole than you even realize. And leave behind a lot of, you know, things that I believe are crazy, which is believing in this reality that's been being told and this story that's being told around the world. <laughs> A lot of people are still mixing both together. I get it. It's not easy to just take a red pill. Like if I used to drink alcohol. It'd be like taking a shot of whiskey. You'd be like, nah, give me, give me some ginger with that ginger ale or give me an old fashioned and make sure that you got an orange on it. I think that there's plenty of people on blue pills, but I think that even people in our community and stuff are still mixing both together and aren't ready to go all the way into red.
This is an old quote of mine, but this is where we're going to start. And this is from Age of Deception. Moving forward can be scary, but not as scary as staying in where we fear keeps us already. I said that <laughs> over five years ago. Little did I know when I did that presentation in Age of Deception that it would be so relevant for right now. Because if you're going to not keep moving forward, even when they're telling you in the world that you cannot move forward, you just are going to stay where the fear keeps you already. And you're going to, and it's, that's not in the divine. The divine is always moving forward. The divine is always moving forward. The story of the real story of the divine's purpose in life. It's not stopping. God doesn't stop. God might take a break for a second and rest, supposedly, on Sunday to get in alignment. But that whole idea, too, that only one day a week is when you get aligned is ridiculous. Just one day a week, let's get together and talk about God. But the rest of the days, do whatever the fuck you want. I haven't lived that life for nine years. And I can tell you that all my dreams and all the things in my life have come true. I still go through the same sufferings and the same problems and the same stuff that everybody else does, but there's that extra tint of that it all works out. That it always gains in my life. That it gains for a lot of people who keep moving forward in life. If you hold on to too much, you truly are stuck in purgatory. Now, I'm starting with Neptune first before we're going to go into purgatory because this actually is helping with it. Where we're at with Neptune right now, it's coming to 22 degrees here on this week of April 15th of 2021. Now, Neptune's history blows my mind because believe it or not, Galileo found Neptune, but because it retrograded on the day that he had found it and it was right by Jupiter, which we're going to start to see here in 2021, Neptune and Jupiter, which I think is even weirder. And that was uh, in 16, when was that? 16, 21. One, one year after the Mayflower. Oh, no, actually, sorry, sorry. For him, I think he was, it was uh, 1612. Sorry, 1612. And then 1621, they started to pick up more of the work. But it looks like Galileo actually found Neptune but didn't believe it because he thought it was a star. He was like, no. And it, believe it or not, the day that he recorded it, they looked back in history, and <laughs> Neptune was retro went retrograde, so it was stopped. And it was such a faraway planet that he's like, oh, it's probably a star, when he looked in his telescope. Which really is kind of funky. Because really, the, the, the idea of the telescope really doesn't come until later. But his observations and his ways of calculating are honestly beyond even our conception because I don't think that the history even presents itself. I've shown him plenty of slides and plenty, plenty of evidence throughout all of my other presentations that for some reason in all the alchemy books of the 1600s and the 17th century, they, 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 they show the levels of Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto without them being discovered. It's not until you get to the 1840s that it's discovered, but there's actually a battle between the English and the French, which always seems to happen, of two different people who claim that they had found it and was doing the work. And I just think it's funny with Neptune in the split, right? You have the split of this like weirdness of, okay, somebody who actually has like a really good telescope and can see it and owns a beer company and, you know, <laughs> finds it. And then you have the Galileo who you know, in many ways changes the world and the idea of how our cosmology works and happens to think it's a star when it's not a star, it's a planet. So that's how Neptune works. There's a divide always and then there's always a confusing and there's always a, no, that can't be it or I don't know or the illusion of it is, or why is it ruled by alcohol? Because a guy that brews beer was probably drunk and was looking at his telescope and ironically found it. Sometimes... Neptune can, you know, 
drugs or alcohol can sometimes have a, our big epiphanies in weird ways, but at the same time, it can also just bring us into such divide with the divine. So it's one thing to seek and find something. It's another to connect with it. And I think that's kind of an interesting aspect of it because, of course, with Neptune, it's Poseidon. And Poseidon, if you actually look at Poseidon's ancestry, I ran, I, I went down and I gave Poseidon a coronavirus swab up his nose. And then I, I was like, you need to do a 23andMe before you come on my presentation, bro. And he was really drunk, so it was pretty simple. But one of the things that gets me the most about Poseidon, of course, is his father's Kronos, Saturn. And his grandfather is Uranus. And he's also connected to Mother Gaia, literally, Grandmama, Grandmama Gaia. And I think that it's interesting, you know, you see so much with Zeus, right? Who's his brother? Who gets pretty much just like everything. So Jupiter is so expansive. It has so much, literally even family line that keeps bringing the line down. But also Zeus's story with Kronos and Uranus, it gets, it gets sectioned off. Like, like Zeus is the one that is connected with Saturn and Uranus, right? And the whole helping his granddad out and getting his father out of control. So there's something about Jupiter here, but we're going to see Jupiter and we're going to see Neptune here in 2021 meet up. The brothers meet up. In the home sign of Poseidon's house and Jupiter used to be home there too because they literally are brothers at home from the same home. Now this can have good effects and this can have bad effects. Let's just say this. I know Real Housewives of Orange County, New Jersey, New York, Miami, I think there's a Utah one coming out. None of them have crazy family stories like this fucking story. None of them have a son, Kronos, their papa, their dad, who fucking tries to control the whole universe and banish his own father. Literally. And since we are in a year where Uranus and Saturn are in square. And I have plenty where I'm going to cover this. But you got to start taking the archetypes, which I talk about in Age of Deception. And I talk about how you've got to give life to all this stuff. Like you can't practice astrology and not give life to the archetypes, to the meanings, to the stories, and to what we actually see. And what's interesting, and I'm going to go a little ahead for a second with Dante, is Dante is one of the first real stories that is brought out of work that isn't about these archetypal people, but real human beings that can connect with the human level of these stories and these kind of things. Which is a way different approach than always giving, you know, these gods all these energies so that's why I think the Dante story is so amazing and, and there's going to be so much to cover with that. But I want to remind people that with this year, we are living through, and whether you, you, want, you can believe it or you don't want to believe it, like for real, that we're in a place where we're living in the reality show of a fucking crazy family that fucking is insane in many ways, but it, it has good characters and has bad characters. And in a year like 2021, where we're actually at a very bad square, meaning that Uranus and Saturn are going to square. So when you have those two, the father and the son, not getting along, and you have the brothers together, and you have the one brother who does deal with it all, who does get everything pretty much. But you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't not give, you know, credit to Poseidon for being a very powerful god, and 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 somebody who 
is connected to 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 Gaia, but also is the same way who represents his trident and riding on a horse as he does. See, there's a weird thing about Poseidon. I mean, it's like this guy's from the water, but he rides on a horse and he's got it's like it's like, do, do you like the land or do you like the sea? He reminds me of the two of Pentacles in Tarot. And so that's what another way of the two fish, right? Like one's out of water and one's in water. Literally, that's Poseidon. He's either in the water or he's riding on a horse like with his trident to kind of represent the oceans. But there's an interesting archetypal story here of family drama because when you actually take a look, you know, and you actually get to where we're at with Uranus and we get Kronos, which is Saturn, and they're both in a bad square, right? And then you get Zeus, and then you get Poseidon, the brothers, in the same house this year. For only a moment, 2022 is the year that they meet, Jupiter and Neptune. And that is propaganda at its highest, all the way to that you only are really going to see benefits through spirituality. It really is either A, you are believing in the spiritual propaganda that is being used against you, which is not even spiritual, but it's like looked as it is. It's like false spirituality, and that goes into the artificial energy that's coming in that I'll talk about. But that the only way is, if you look at Jupiter's line, okay, like I'm just putting a red line through that. If you look at Jupiter's line, Jupiter fucking seeded so much. Hades didn't. I mean, you know, you look at you look at all the kids of of, of Saturn. And when you get to the masculine side of it, all even Hermes, Apollo, I mean everything. It's a, it, the, the line is Uranus, the highest to the universe. Don't forget that. Everybody seems to think Uranus is just like some crazy planet. Uranus is the planet that is the highest of the high. It reaches the highest. It's also the highest of the family archetypal table. And believe it or not, Saturn is right below that. So what was I saying at the beginning of this presentation? From 2018 here to 2023, we are right in the middle of it, right in the middle of Uranus and Kronos, or Uranus and Saturn, because they both are represented by Saturn's energy, right? So Capricorn on this side and Aquarius on this side, and boom, we're right in the middle and they're squaring, and it's the brothers that are in many ways coming together that could either be scared as shit and trying to figure out this mess or you know could be uh, both of them have some really weird aspects with kind of like indulging in sin believe it or not like this painting of poseidon already is like his only fans fucking profile picture And Aphrodite comes from Uranus's genitalia. From gen you know, I mean, it's fucking insane. So what I'm trying to tell you all is there is a battle and a war going on and everything keeps connecting to being stuck in the middle. And we are stuck in the middle between a father and a son. And if you take a Christian archetype of that, or even you take any archetype from Islam, or even take Egyptian um, aspects of it, we are in a war between father and son. It would be like as if people are questioning whether there's a God or not, or you're seeing people that are finally jumping on the train of God. But there's always that question of like, well, which God is it? Is it the one that comes before God, who's the representative of God, who obviously Kronos was not a good representative of God, but at the end of the day, is Uranus God? No, Uranus is not God because God is above Uranus. 
But people get kind of lost in too many stories without remembering that, again, it's my whole thing at the beginning of this, people are too stuck into the physical aspect of things and not looking at even above. And this is purgatory in itself. But it's not bad to, to, to understand and to look into all these things, but I think that it's very interesting to see that we are split down the middle of all the time, and we are really in the middle of everything right now, including purgatory is in the middle between hell and, believe it or not, heaven, which is originally paradiso. So let's go into Dante. Why does his work and life relate to what we are all going through today? This one didn't all fully come together till last night. Believe it or not. No, I'm not Mr. Ripley. <laughs> but there's statues of this man. This man is like anybody who gives out a lot of great truth, cast away, and also revered. But the main thing that, it, why is it, and that's, what, that's what's happening, and let's just take that for one second. We are all being cast away if you choose not to take the shot or you do get COVID. <laughs> You're a castaway. You need to go quarantine. You go against it. You're revered as dirty, as a bad person, as a sinner from something that's not even from a spiritual body. But the main deal is he was born we don't know the exact day but there's plenty of sites that show him as May 30th. And I actually believe this chart way more than I ever could believe anybody's chart in my life. Whoever did the dissertation to this chart is the most amazing astrologer on the planet, probably. But we do know the year, 1265. We do know the time around May, especially, remember, on the Julian calendar system, it's different. But still, Gemini energy... And what's interesting about him is he was born 65. 1284 was when Saturn and Pluto made their conjunction. So that rare alignment of Saturn and Pluto and Capricorn, which is always why, how I predicted the plagues, how I predicted massive changes in structures in the world and governments and also a feeling of the dark coming in, is always associated with that. He was 19 years old on his nodal return in Capricorn, right around exactly where Saturn and Pluto met in 2020. But Saturn and Pluto met on his north node when he was having his nodal return that everybody has at 18 to 19 years old. He's a full moon in fucking Sag, like Donald Trump, ironically enough, Dante would have been a Donald Trump. He's not an eclipse baby, but Gemini, full moon and Sag, but different than Donald Trump in many ways from the sense of he has Mercury retrograde conjunct Saturn exact in Gemini. And what I think that's the most interesting about that part of the chart, and it's an opposed to his moon, and with a Gemini rising, by the way, with the sun in the 12th house, which he's unfiltered spiritual soul. Like, whoever did this chart is just fucking... Whoever did the dissertation is just beyond. And I bet you the info is really out there. Somebody might have stolen it from the church. I don't know. He does have Venus in Cancer, almost near the exact position as Trump as well. And this isn't about Trump, but I just think it's an interesting way to actually, like, look at him as... They, they, not that they look the same, but there is kind of a weird element of his very intense way of communicating and, well, he's wearing red. And that he doesn't give up on the work 
for his life. Like he just keeps doing it and keeps pushing the message. And he's also cast away just as much as Trump has been cast away during the same time periods. You gotta remember, life's a lot slower in 1284. We're in a world where Trump got cast away within one minute of a text or a tweet, you know what I mean? So like here, you know, his message takes a while to get around and takes a bunch of people a long time in a church to be able to, in an area in Italy and, and, and all the things that happen in his life to where it takes a bit of time. Like they had real birds then that sent messages, right? <laughs> On little quails like, oh yeah, take it, take the message out, woo. I don't know if that was real. Was that real, Anne? Did they actually have birds that would actually take messages to people? Or is that all just like storybook movie stuff? Anne? I'm, I'm asking back in history if there were actual birds that would take messages to people back in the day, or is that a movie thing? Okay. So they did do that. Confirmed. Truth. <laughs> not, not false. Um, and so it's funny, the whole tweet thing, and the birds always represent, and the Palladians, and the birds always represent whether it's the white dove or anything like that of the light. So I think it's really interesting that when they censor you on Twitter, they're taking away your light, your information. They're taking away your bird that represents purity, and which purity is truth. What's interesting about his chart is, so let's go back to 1284. Saturn, Pluto, Jupiter all meet up in Capricorn, and it obviously has a big effect on this guy. Big effect. Because he's the only person's work that I've been searching for that lived during the same Saturn, Jupiter, Pluto, and Capricorn that we had in 2020, that actually has a bunch of work that we can actually look at today, and oh boy, is it connected to exactly what we're going through today. Holy shit. There is nobody else I can find. When you start looking into history, you have to remember, when you enter into the 1300s, you enter into the Dark Ages. He also lived through the Knights Templar being killed. He was around during that time, close to the church. It's not like this is just some random dude. But that Mercury and Saturn is able to see structures of reality so intense from the 12th house and it's a mercury retrograde which we're, we're going to see a mercury retrograde here in 2021 in gemini its natural sign square neptune he was not born with that but we're going to go through that this year and i think it's important to try and understand that that's going to be a wild transit this year of trying to decipher coding and messages and truth and deception while Jupiter is going to meet up Zeus with Poseidon, his brother, Neptune, and Neptune's home sign where it gets divided. So I want everybody to take this, look at this picture of Dante real quick. Because I have, I have some notes here I'm going to go through. But I, I really want people to take a minute here to process this life that he is in. Although, it can scare people, right? Especially back then. It looks scary. But what I always notice, and especially I'm a big Italian art fan, there's something about all this dark contrast to things that is showing things so you can see it clear. And that's what we are in. The contrast is something that you shouldn't be scared of. It's the light coming through stronger.
And I think that's important to note, and I think it's important to remember. But, yeah, do you mind? Gracias. How do you say, how do you say thank you in, in Italian? Grazie? Yeah, so. so, this is where I'm about to break down some interesting stuff to you all, and it was too much info for me to type out or even cut and paste. So I thought we would go through this in a, in a different light. Yeah, that would actually help. Yeah, you just let me know when we're ready on camera and then... We good? So, Mr. Dante here is known for his divine comedy, which I think is hilarious as I'm talking about divine and I talk about divine so much. The, but his divine comedies, there's Inferno, hell. There's Purgatory, which is plain out just Purgatory. <laughs> and then there's Paradiso, which is actually heaven. You could look up Paradiso and it goes right to heaven on, in, in Wikipedia and in so many things. But I think that it's funny that it's a divine comedy because not that it was like some sort of crazy scientific thing to what people analyze, but it was actually accessible for people to read and it was poems. And it was very relatable to people opposed to like I was showing earlier about like when I started getting into the, I guess you could say the divine comedy of the Greek mythology or we could go into Egyptology as well. You know, it's kind of like these are just stories where this was like him putting himself through these issues and the actual struggles and strifes that humanity goes through while connecting it with the divine. Which is what I would say a lot of us that are watching this or me doing this presentation is that's what we're trying to do and that's what we are doing in this period of time. He was, of course, born in Italy and born in Florence, but there's, I mean, you know, I'm not here to just sit here and go through every little single tidbit. I want to connect the big pieces. Because if we were to take the world today, it feels like we're in purgatory because it feels like we're stuck in the middle, like I've been saying. And so when you're stuck in the middle, it feels like you're truly stuck in the middle. So... Let's take a look at this because I think it's very important. Oh, I, I don't know why I did that. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. If you look at to the slide to the left, this is where you actually see hell at the bottom, and it's at the bottom of Earth, okay, in the sphere of Earth. And then, of course, you have purgatory, which is like on Earth, but really to reach the upper parts, to reach to Paradiso, you have to know the planets. You have to know the divine. And you have to know the ladder that gets you up to that divine. And it's ironic that it's all the spheres of the planets once you get up to get up to heaven, which is very Iranian. But this purgatory is that stuck between that middle of heaven and hell, which is really Earth. And really, in a lot of the stories, you know, a lot of it, to me, is, you know, this struggle and strife of, you know, whether it's sin or whether it's just basically, if you want to take it from more of a modern perspective, just like the struggles we go through to realize that the comedic divine story is that being awake and being aware of these things and working through these issues through the layers of life that we do, which if we were to take, now there's actual layers of purgatory which we're going to go through today, but I'm trying to actually go from the higher, because I guess it's high vibe, right? To go from the higher form first, which is the planets, which we do. Like, 
Mercury all the way all the way to Saturn and then reaching that ladder of contemplation through this weird star realm to enter the crystalline form which then enters you into this beautiful heaven. But when you look on the other side in the middle there, you start to see things like being stuck in limbo. Well, it sure feels like we're in limbo right now. And especially because we're in a year after a Saturn-Pluto-Jupiter conjunction, do you really think 2020 and 2021 are different? Sure, Jupiter and Saturn have moved in Aquarius but Pluto is so intense, and that's why I said I started the first planet I talk about is Pluto. It's still in Capricorn, which are, which are structures and layers and going deep. And it's interesting as we are at 26 degrees here of Pluto and Capricorn, which is the exact degree that Dante lived under during the Saturn-Pluto conjunction in the same year when he went through his nodal return. So... Right now, you were living when Dante experienced the same transit of what we went through with Saturn, Jupiter, Pluto in the same exact place in the sky. And what does he come out with? These crazy layers. So his Mercury-Saturn conjunction is intense to me in Gemini, and we are in a north node in Gemini, and that north node is heading towards his Mercury and his Saturn. Now, there's something in astrology that is very weird. You can look at the charts of people that have passed and when transits hit their stuff, their stuff comes up. Whether it's Michael Jackson, whether it's presidents, whether it's anybody. You can even go look at your grandmother's chart, your grandfather's chart that's passed, or your great-grandfather, your great-grandmother's chart, or anybody that you have fallen, you know, in love with in your life that have passed. You can look and notice whether it's their birthday and feel their energy again, or something pops up about them or a picture pops up about them. But because we are replaying the same history as it repeats itself as what he went through, this is what has not changed from 2020. Because this is where I'm trying to say that when you get stuck in the 3D world, like, well, the numbers of coronavirus have come down. It's like, I just laugh because you're not still seeing that we're all actually still in the Capricorn going deeper into the layers of exposing these deeper layers of betrayal, malefic intent of manipulation, of control, or more importantly, sin. And what the ultimate sin that is being done to people is having them live in sin by the, what has been created as control to have you sit in this purgatory and only one doorway out, which is to have you get access to these really fucked up things. So if we take the layers, and actually if we look to the very right, that was actually Botticelli who painted a lot. Botticelli didn't do all of there's a lot of different artists that painted and did sketches and Botticelli did a lot of sketches too but Botticelli actually did this of Dante and how you would see kind of in the inside of people in these to me it's kind of like a, a, a I mean if, I mean we could go there but it's kind of like a a vortex And it feels like we're all in this vortex. And it looks, you know, that picture always kind of freaks me out a little bit. Just because it looks weird, right? Just like me walking in this red jacket and with black shirt on, black pants and a black shoes makes people think like, are you Luciferian? Like, you know what I mean? It's like, no, I'm doing a purgatory fucking show. Gotta go. Very nice job on the zooming in there, Craig. So, actually, thank you for zooming in and staying there. So, we're, I've shown you all this before. I've gone over this before. 
that there's this ladder of contemplation that we reach to get to that ultimate heaven. Now, this is after you're out of purgatory. And what I'm going to get to, and you know what I was going to, I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to let the whole thing play out the way I was going to. But I think that it's important to notice that Dante's stars are literally Dante's stars. <laughs> like, that's where his sun is. That's where his Mercury is. That's where his Saturn is. And how funny that he has Saturn in Gemini with Mercury retrograde right on top of it. And that's that ladder of contemplation of levels, of structures, and also a ladder, Saturn, Mercury, the contemplation to cross over. And this is where, in 2021, the North Node and Mars have just crossed. And now we're seeing eclipses come this spring. And this is going to be the last big eclipses here of these areas. And this is your 2021 of your way out of purgatory. Because if we are going to take rising through the darkness, per se, which, if you can put it on camera, I'm going to take it off this real quick, and then I'm going to share uh, something here. So I got good notes. And I'm going to... I'm going to screen mirror to Deacon Frost. And we will do a new quick note. So if we were to actually take 2018 into 2023, and here we are in the middle. This is that ladder of contemplation point, and I've been talk I've been channeling for years about this wall. And why I'm doing this presentation now, and with all the beautiful Aries energy moving into Taurus and all the planets direct, is before this Mercury comes retrograde in Gemini this spring, and more importantly, Jupiter and Neptune meet up in Pisces. They're not going to meet up exact, but they're going to be in the same sign. This is where we are going to rise through the darkness. Now, it's not going to look like it from the physical world, because the physical world, as going back into the slides of Dante's like layers, and the understanding of it is we're going to help you understand what are these layers and how are they connected to the astrology now. And, but what I believe is this is the, the point of influx to rise up. If we were to kind of make that the horizon line here of the time period and that we were, you know, it's like a stock chart, right? You, you see Bitcoin, you see the marketplace like down here, and then you see this big rise up. Some people are going to rise up, and then some people, their chart of life are going to rise, can stay down, right? Because this is where we've been stuck in this kind of purgatory place, and really it's whether or not you're being led into hell or slaughter, or you're being led into divine light and to paradiso, which will take its moments to get through Saturn and Aquarius as it's getting ready to enter into Pisces and Jupiter and, and, and Neptune and then Jupiter and Aries, which will be very strong. And the Saturn-Uranus squares that are happening here in 2021, that we're at the influx point. And if I were to go broader, and if I were to... Let's see if I can do it this way. So... We'll just add another blank one. So, yeah, this is better. Here we go. So, I did in 2012, right? And then 2018, and then 2024. That's how I did it. So, there were blocks. And this is the start to it there. So we went through this one already, but this was your big awakening, Mayan prophecy. I go, I'm going to go into that in another slide soon. And I've already done a whole presentation on that, so I don't want to bore you to all of that. But we're literally in the middle 
of all three blocks and in the middle of this main block. And that's why I'm here, which is literally purgatory. So why, so, and I think it, it, I know it might sound so stupid and so simple, but, but it, it, it literally is. It literally is the middle. So don't trip out. Don't freak out. Yes, it's weird because we are crossing a bridge of contemplation at the moment, which if you could bring it back, uh, I'll get out of this uh, now and... Um Oh, I might need to bring up uh, Andy. Do you think you could just click on my laptop and push it back to the keynote? Por favor. Thank you. That's my background. It's one of the Apple backgrounds. It's pretty boring. Although that thing kind of looks creepy. I've always wondered what they were taking pictures of. I think it's just rocks and over dramatic. Oh, no. My laptop's to the left. You can just push all your fingers up, like swipe up. And then all the windows should pop up. There we go. Um, so if we look, if, if, if Craig, you could zoom back to the right of that ladder in contemplation, um, to the right. Yeah, there we go. So that's where we're at. You've already done all that deep spiritual work. You've already come to this place of contemplation in your life. Now, this is contemplation in all ways and forms. This is contemplations into, should I be in this relationship or not? Should I be in this job or not? Should I get the shot or not? Should I fall, is the government trustworthy or not? Was the election rigged or was it not? Is there going to be a war or not? Is money going to be okay or not? Should I go into crypto or stocks or not? Should I carry cash or buy gold or not? <laughs> Everything is at this influx point. It would feel like it's very Libra. But contemplation with Saturn is not choices. Since we're in Aquarius, it is obs observations of many things and finding what is the ultimate connection to the divine. That is it. So what feels like it's connected to the divine and what is not? Let's use money, because Uranus is in Taurus. The contemplation of people and money, like crypto, and the future of how exchanges are. And then, of course, there's people putting a lot of fear behind that. But then there's also then the governments that are printing all the money that they want. Of course, they're borrowing that money based upon using bonds that they use their own currency in, in America. A lot of countries don't do that. That's why Argentina is falling apart, because they created bonds and used money that wasn't their own currency. But still, we're going to deal with what in 1920 the Germans did, was print a bunch of money, had a big boom, and then had a horrible, horrible crash of inflation, hyperinflation which drove them to go into wars, which Uranus coming into Gemini is every American war that is the biggest one that is in the history books. Like, there's plenty of wars. Vietnam was a big war. World, war of 1812 was a big war. But why is it that the Revolutionary War, the Civil War, and World War II happen to be the only ones you see documentaries on 24-7? Well, those were Uranus and Gemini moments for America, and Mars, the planet of war, is in Gemini. So America's contemplation, if I take this now from America's chart, doesn't matter which rising sign you use at this point, is that Mars is at that ladder of contemplation about war, that America is always contemplating about war. America's sun sits right on that North Star. Do you think that Benjamin Franklin, John Adams, 
And I'll give Georgie some of this here. You think they had a, a, a plan when the planets were aligned and that they would pick the sun to be on the star Sirius? And if you look at America's chart, right on that North Star, which happens to be in direct alignment if we can zoom out. They were Masons, by the way. If we could zoom into the middle of that slide, the sphere of the other one, yeah, there we go. So 23 degrees, or 32 from that side, but it's interesting that the sphere of fire, which is actually, this is, this is purgatory. It's interesting, you know, they have Jerusalem on there, but they have the North and the South Hemisphere. But it's so weird that it's like in perfect alignment. If you were to like look at like a 2D model of Earth, a map, and you were to follow that line, and you were to put ourselves in that place, that thing pretty much goes through Washington, D.C., the line. <laughs> I've already done it in my head. I've like, already done it. If you were to put like what we see as the geocentric map of the Earth, uh, <laughs> it goes right through. And Jerusalem's exactly where it would be on the other side of the map. True stellar North Pole. This goes into the magnetic pole shifts that are happening and switching. If you notice that North Pole is no longer there, it's leaning to the right. If you were to look it up, you can go look it up yourself because it changes so much. It, it kind of needles back and forth. It tilts like the, same, like the same way that the Earth wobbles. The North and the South Pole wobble and wobble, but they're starting to wobble a lot. So it's like the Earth and the people on it are not conscious anymore of where North is anymore because we are in purgatory. And you have to use the sphere of air and fire to get out of purgatory, which is your intellect and your passions and your fire. Then you have to move out. And then it also is the moon. And I've gone through this before, but to get out of purgatory, and I haven't even gone into purgatory yet, but I am almost giving you the way out because I don't want to get you all stuck in because I don't believe that we are all stuck in purgatory is what I really believe but I believe that a lot of people are. And it's that first heaven of the moon, which is faith blemished by inconsistency. You know, you can't lose your faith right now in life because of the inconsistency of Fauci and telling you to wear a mask or not wear a mask or you need to get this shot or whatever. Like, you're not going to get out of purgatory until you let go of that narrative of that your faith has been blemished by inconsistency. Now, there's going to be those that say, well, I believe Fauci all the way, and I never found him being inconsistent. Well, you obviously found the opposite sign inconsistent. So both sides do. So all of us have to let go of both sides of the argument to get out. And so on and so on and so on, if you follow up. Now, if we uh, zoom out, And we'll come back to that slide, and we look to the slide to the left, which is, of course, a hermetic alchemy slide. Everything always comes to the top in hermetic alchemy to Mercury that is, of course, and I don't mind, I, I hope you don't mind if I stand real quick, and you can, even if people could see the slide, but I'm going to do some pointing real quick. Um, like, the, the, you have to remember that there is a line that goes across here. Okay, like I was just showing, and everything has an equator or everything has its equinox point, right? Because this is a equal half of everything, or a yin and a yang. And so, here's God, Yeshua. This is also with Scorpio and Taurus, which is where the nodes are moving into 2022. So as we go to the contemplation to get to the crystalline sphere, to get to heaven and paradise is that technically the physical part, which is Taurus, right? Venus, the Garden of Eden. But the only way to understand any of this or to get through any of all this shit is Mercury, which is where Dante 
has his in its home sign of Gemini, retrograde, conjunct Saturn, which Saturn is the bottom world, if we can go down, of the physical reality, but knowing the duality, the duality of the feminine and the masculine. So the masculine having its peacock energy all frailed out, so it's projecting its energy outwards. And if you notice, even the phoenixes that are rising through all this out of... So this is the idea for many of 3D to 5D. I think it goes a lot deeper than that, but it's an easy, more kindergarten way to look at it. Also, every planet in the tree of life, that the fruit is understanding the planets. That everything, even from Dante, or everything from history, everything from the alignment of the pyramids, everything from everything in history is the tree of life is knowing the divine, which the divine is always connected to literally the divine light that you can see at night, which is through the darkness. That's how to rise through the darkness. You can only see the planets at night, too. Unless you can see Venus in the morning, it's the only one that you can really see. Sure, you can see the moon and the sun. But you can't understand where everything is unless you understand day and night. And most people live in a world, in a time system, that keeps them trapped in this. Because I have to go to bed. You know, every horoscope, I'm on my nine year anniversary, Every fucking lunar eclipse that was available to see, I went outside for the last nine years, and I have plenty of receipts and videos of me outside recording the videos for you all. One of my first YouTube videos on YouTube in 2011 is me during a lunar eclipse with my buddy Jacob. And unless you know how to go outside, which this world right now is telling you not to go outside, which is very purgatory and very taking you to hell, then you're stuck in this world. And the idea that a shot, the idea that even, and I'm just going to be very blunt, and I'm just going to be honest with you, that it is the, immu the divine is the total and full immunity from the dark, the light, and meaning the information of the divine. That is your shot. That is your vitamin C. I know people can get so lost in this physical, but as a Leo teacher, astrologer with a sun in Leo and a lot of dignified planets and a Mars and Scorpio and all this stuff, it's my job to embody, to prove to you all that when I sit here and eat McDonald's and I smoke a fucking whatever and I fucking just do my life and live in the divine and I don't think about that shit that you all do, I'm just going to be real, I don't think about how many calories are in it, is it going to give me a heart attack today, is this going to give me some fucked up shit and maybe that's from because my grandmother was Christian science, I don't know. But I can tell you that because I follow this and I follow this shit as truth, which is the divine, and I put the divine above everything in life, that you get to paradise and you live in paradise on this earth when you are in that beautiful state and she's going to pop up again. Because she is on that tree of life, because she is understanding of it because she's also looking up like everybody else but they are not because that's the twins that are still contemplating the more you contemplate the more that you continue to question in your life the truth of this divine science in life, you are not ever going to reach there. And I know I sound super fucking fatalistic and preacherish or I'm some fucking guy from fucking the church, but it's just truth. 
Because when you test this theory in yourself, you will realize that everything in life, and if you could zoom up, because I love that we could zoom in and out, because that's the world you live in, but wait, what? There's a whole other world above you that it's all focused on the divine, and Mercury is the mind, but Mercury is the messenger of God. And our angels are messages that come into our head, that we hear, that we listen to, whether those are our guides, whether they're our angels, but they are the messengers of God. And you can tap more into those angels, more into your guides when you know this science. And Dante knew it when he did these, and I hate to say it from a historical point of view or historian point of view, just, you know, a representation of the medieval times that they were in and dramatic but very good and it was accessible for people to read and just look at it as yeah that was then this is now how interesting it would look good on my fucking book mantle or maybe on my fucking wall if i had a picture about it but that's about all not too many people that actually want to actually look at it as maybe we should apply that shit to today no, today we live in a world where we don't even look at this shit. We don't even fucking look at the world in this way at all. The distractions of the news and the media, the race wars, the wars of financial aspects, the wars of you being a sick creature that is transmitting a dirty virus because you're dirty as a human and that you don't deserve liberty. Fauci today just said it. He said he doesn't care about liberty. Liberty is more than a constitution from our founding fathers. Liberty is the liberty that you have within yourself through God that you see the truth and you know the truth and you follow the truth and you have total immunity from the dark when you live in it. But we're going to go through now some of the harsher aspects of life, of purgatory, and more importantly, of sin. And I'm not coming here to tell you that I'm not a sinner and that I have mastered not sinning. Definitely not going to come at you with that one. <laughs> but I'm going to come to you to help you understand what are the forces out there that are, they are doing to use certain things to get you caught up into this space. Now we're gonna focus on to the right. So if we can look at that purgatory one, Craig. And let's start at the bottom. The island of purgatory. So in the Divine Com Comedy Story, it's about this island of purgatory. The very bottom of it, and if we look at it, this is like anti-purgatory. Like this is like basically like pre-purgatory, right? But it's the excommunicated. I, I, I really think that it's very interesting right now how many excommunicated people are at the bottom of purgatory, right? But really, excommunication is really, um, I think, the dark's way of making you feel like you are stuck completely when you get censored or you get told that you're a bad person because you don't choose to do the shot or you choose to follow your own way. Like that's the dark. That's the dark keeping you in purgatory when you own that you are excommunicated. But also you can flip it as those that, especially from the church point of view, that the, excommun the excommunicated like, you know, are the ones that basically were sinners and are bad and died and didn't go to heaven or hell, but they have a chance to live through this reality and pray for those in purgatory to eventually get to the top to get back to earth to try again the negligent and the unshriven 
there's this repented that repented late. Like they repented too late. Like they didn't repent their sins. They were, they were too late. Now, take that context into the spiritual realm into today. I've said it myself coming into 2020. Like I was like, I hope people aren't too late. And I, and I kind of feel bad about saying that because I don't want to ever make people feel that they're going into purgatory after going through all this work. But there is something about where, where is a line though where it's like, wow, you're just not getting it. And I think that's the hard part about Saturn, Pluto, and Jupiter and why Dante did this is because th th there becomes a line in life where people allow the dark to take them over. So to look at this from kind of the state of what or where it was back in, in those times, especially in the 1300s and, and where it is today, you know, there, there is something to say about it feels like those that do kind of not care about their sins, that you, you can use the idea of repentance and, and repenting as, you know, that you're not admitting or owning up to it, right? Once you, at least you do that, you get to the gate of purgatory, which you come out. But then vanity or being proud or the envious, if we could move up, please. Let's move up the gates of purgatory, please. Thank you. Craig, <laughs> this is a lot like your um, dungeons of... Dungeon of Dreams. <laughs> so once you get up to this gate of purgatory, you get to the proud, the envious, the wrathful. This is like bad love, right? So this is the idea of like ego that's going around right now but really i think it's about and i'm gonna just be honest because some people i don't want to feed chum to the I, I feel like i'm in the movie jaws and i'm like trying to get jaws and i'm just like throwing blood in the water but we're gonna go with it the proud that are happy like like i don't understand the euphoria of of people getting the shot I, and this is my own opinion so i'm not saying it as truth but you, you're going to have to take your own consideration into all this stuff with the proud, the bad love, like being proud. Like, like I'm proud about God. I'm proud about the work of God. I'm proud that God gives me life. Like, that's not bad love. That's good love. But if you're proud about things, and you're allowed to be proud about that you worked hard and bought a nice TV, you're allowed, that's not bad love. It's the proudness about what you're proud about. And envy is one of the greatest sins there really is in this time, right? Because it's like, I'm so envious they're able to go in that city or that state or that country and do things that I'm not able to do. So I'm going to start letting go of my divinity in order to get there. I'll take the shot. I'll take a crazy test. I'll do whatever. These are all setups that Saturn, Pluto, and Jupiter were set up we're not even into the artificial and weird energy that's from behind the curtain yet. But that is what they are feeding people this story because this is the backstory. This is the archetypal structured plan from the dark in the background of what to feed you or to entice you with to get you to do things that they want to do. So one... I mean, on the news, they're paying these radio stations a shit ton of money. By the way, I don't know if you remember, iHeartRadio is like bankrupt, but they found a way to like be able to pay their loan off without paying their loan off. So all the radio stations broke. They just all got a bunch of money because now on the morning radio shows, and I don't think anybody here really listens to morning radio as much. Depends. They're all like, oh, it's my time to get the shot. I am so proud. Like, they're pushing it. And then 
there's a lot of people that live in envy right now, whether it's the envy of, you know, I want to live that life that that person's not living or that person has that clothes or that person has this or that person has that. And what they're using is you can go to the grocery store. God, I'm so envious that person can go get groceries. Uh, fucking, you are allowed to go get fucking groceries. Like, you're going to have to have courage here. Because in all the sins you'll notice, there is nothing about courage in purgatory that is what keeps you in there or the steps safe to work to. The wrathful, well, huh. There's a lot of wrath going around on this planet right now. Because wrath is about taking advantage and not giving a fuck. And to me, going into what we're seeing in the world today, I mean, I, I feel like it's like the wrath of, like, you know, there was a book called The Grapes of Wrath, right? And it was a story about the, the Dust Bowl that happened and people who came to California to find more farming jobs and they got there and it was fucking... <laughs> terrible like it was it was it was dust it was dirt it was, it was exactly what they had but it was hotter and they figure it out of course and they get there but you know it's almost like the wrath is I, I mean and i'm just gonna be real so you take the shot but you're not immune so you still have to do everything that somebody who doesn't have to take it does it but they're saying it'll protect you from dying, but you can still get it, still transmit it. So what's like, and then, and then it's like this rapid, like the same way it was like the grapes of wrath was like this rapid go towards it, go towards the West, go. And we see this in people jumping states. And I'm not saying you're in purgatory, but it's interesting that the envy brings you to the wrath. To me, wrath is you've got to jump on it and it, you get there, it's like the gold rush. It reminds me of Neptune and Pisces, which are now, right? Like you have to go get the gold. Like when my parent, my family came on the Oregon Trail, it wasn't for gold. It was for religious freedom and it was also to get out of the Civil War because they were abolitionists. And so, you know, it got a little crazy for them and they were Quakers and they wanted a life to where they didn't have to deal with that and to get out of this kind of crazy wrath that's going around. Because it's almost like I will find love through this great crazy jump into a place that I've been envious that I don't have. And, you know, because if we look at this as layers, like think of like these as planets again, right? Too. Like proud would be like Mars, envy would be Venus, and wrath would be Mercury. And then you get the slothful, which is the moon, which is not enough love, which is that you're like depressed, that you don't, you don't like life, that you don't think life's that great. And they have put that, the middle of purgatory is the slothful. Sit at home and work on Zoom. Sit there. Just, it, it, here's free money. Which, of course, makes us feel like not enough love. I, I'm going to be honest. Like, you know, it, 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 it's rough as a single man after a divorce trying to date in a pandemic, both pandemic, when, you know, I, I'll, I'm, not, I'm honest. I have found some beautiful women on dating sites, and they are freaked out of this shit. So you can't go meet them or they go, I have to quarantine for fucking eight weeks because that's always what it is. They always say, oh, but, you know, then I have to go see this person, you know. Like, this is the slothful. I'm not calling them that. I'm just saying that the identity of what is being used against people right now and keeping them in purgatory is you've got to see how the story is. And when you get to too much love, I mean, you get to, to gluttony, with love, you get to lustful at the top, which I think is the most interesting part of all this, which is 
every government health organization in a majority of the countries and states or local cities have all come out with how to deal with sex during these times. And they advocate for pornography. I'm not saying it's bad, but I'm just saying that they're telling you to fucking, when the peace dealer and I did our sketch and I was laughing like they're telling you to go put a glory hole in my house. Like they are literally telling you to put a hole in your wall. Look it up. I know some people aren't gonna believe me. Look it up and stick your penis through the hole in your wall into your lover's whatever hole. You, whatever you're into, on the other side of the wall. So I think when Dante did this, of course there's the lustful that, you know, of course ladies out there are going to be like, oh my God, there's all those guys out there that are fuck boys. Oh, there's girls that are fuck girls too and don't want anything too. So don't even try and fucking tell me that. I've been through that. But how weird that once you get through the lustful, though, is too much love, then you get to paradise. Now, that's the one that I'm still on the fence about here about all this thing. That there's a carrot, which is paradise. When the real secret, if we can zoom out, and we can go to the next slide to the left over. Because technically, once you get to paradise, if we look at the very bottom, if we can go zoom into the very bottom of that thing, that paradise is sitting on top of Earth, and that's breakers of vows. Hmm. So the lustful to the breakers of the vows. What my point is, is that the carrot on top for people is obviously the vaccine card to get to the lustful things in their life, right? A concert, to go to a bar. But the truthers that go to paradise are the breakers of the vows of those that are keeping people in purgatory. That you are, are that you, you either are in purgatory right now and living through those layers and there's something about the lustful, I guess, of like learning to finally get to the point where you're not slothful, you know, you're not envious, you're not sitting at the bottom is feeling like you're excommunicated and you're sitting in the wrath of, I mean, we can go on all day. And I'm actually break down all nine purgatory um, elements much better. I just wanted to show you the glyphs of it first. And we're not going to go to this yet, but I think it's interesting that the, that, that, that the moon at the bottom and more importantly, the breakers of the vows, that's an emotional situation, right? Like I said, you have to get through the emotion of the inconsistency that can bring you down of life. Like, I, I'm, it's, like whether that's a relationship, like for me, the, the emotional inconsistency of relationships in my life. I don't let that get to me. I don't even look at it as inconsistent. I look at it as like fucking, maybe it's my Pluto and Libra <laughs> square the sun and Leo exact. Uh, and we're on a sun square Pluto day. You know, like I'm like, okay, I got a lot of love and I, I like relationship, but it's also like, uh, you know, is there anything that's really all intense and will ever work or will ever not like try to fucking kill me literally or persecute me or you know what I mean like there's a lot of things but it's like not letting yourself emotionally get entrenched and you have to break break the vows of purgatory you have to break the vows also of what they're saying on earth because I have shown you plenty of times in alchemy who sits on the earth the monkey sits on the earth that only looks at the earth the Fauci that is not looking at the divine on how to fix this problem that breakers of the vows are not sinners. Breakers of the vows are those that are in the light. Because the vows that people are committing to right now on this planet are purgatory vows. They're vow and what's below purgatory is hell. It's the hidden element of hell. It's the, it's the you know, you get another chance. But to me, it's the dark's way of being like, let's just get you to the carrot to paradise on earth which you still then have to do all this other work 
that most people will never do because they will never break the vows of the earth that they were programmed into. And that's the dark night of the soul of what 2012 and the end of the world was. The end of the world, the end of the earth, and the vows that you were programmed into. And that's the beginning of the whole story that we have entered. Because if you notice, and I've gone into this, whether it's the changing of the age from Pisces into Aquarius, or whether it's the fucking Mayan prophecy, or whether it's the Higgs hydrogen collider of 2012 and playing with atoms and smashing them together and fucking up our whole entire earth and maybe putting us onto a different multidimensional earth. I can go on for fucking days, but that breaker of the vows is not the breaking of the vows like a marriage of love, but the breaking of the vows of an adherence and giving away your sovereignty to the false earth that is not the vows of the divine. I need some Sprite after that. I think I'm channeling my ancestors today, the reverends. Not my Quakers. <laughs> I think they showed up to the Quaker hall meetings and said some nice things and went at home, you know? Maybe, I don't know. Uh, all right. Here's another version of it. This is actually like a earth version that was painted of it. But if we can zoom in, Craig, to the left one, um, this is the same one, but just a different version. If we can go to the bottom, right? Like this is just like the layers. So if we can then slide to the right so we can kind of use the left slide of these layers and go to the picture to the right. So... The excommunicated are always at the bottom of the castle. I'm going to use a different way to look at it. So the ones that are on the docks, the, the street workers and farmers and the, the, the people that are... So if we look, keep looking to the right by the water's edge and down at the bottom, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's the people that are... Look, this is, how the, this is how the dark is looking at you. This is how this crazy world is trying to look at people as they're on top of their Babel fucking hill, right? That they're in paradise and you're just fucking down there doing all of your, the work for them. You're the Amazon filler for the company that's allowed to operate when nobody else was allowed to. You're the worker that, you know, makes all the food while you go to the French laundry and eat it and tell everybody to wear a mask, but you're fucking sitting there with no mask on and having the time of your life and drinking wine and having your fucking truffle soup, you know? I was expecting Craig to be like, fuck yeah. <laughs> but, you know, that th th this is crazy ways to look at it. So if we back out and go up to the top and we'll just go to the top, we'll just like go up to like understanding the sloth, we'll go, go to the slothful because I feel like that's the weirdest world, right? Like that's deficient love, which I feel, I think we're all in, in a lot of that feeling, right? If we feel like we, I think we do jump out of purgatory and into purgatory a lot right now. Uh, so if we cut across and try and find that slothful, in the, which would be the middle basically to the top, right? Oh yeah, it's that empty hole in the middle of what would be something that is complete. So it's that hole that's within your soul and your heart that you either continue to hold on to in your life or not that does not complete the circle. Like if you look at the zodiac or you look at your whole entire body or you look at your life and the moon represents the chest, that even in the middle of this depiction of what purgatory is, I was able to show you, nobody's done this before, by the way, that this hole is the hole in your chest, the hole in your emotions, because you are still holding on to laziness, just getting through life. When you're in that space, you have a hole in your life. You're not complete. You will never get out of that purgatory. That's why it is, and it is, I think, the hardest level that people get stuck in right now. 
And if you follow the moon as it's coming on top of the North Node on the ladder of contemplation constantly, it's that you emotionally are contemplating too much all the time and you're not doing anything about it and you feel left empty because you just lived in your head. I'm using astrology now to mix it with Dante's purgatory to mix it with where we're at actually in Dante's stars and actually the geocentric universe and the cosmology of Dante's work and the ladder of contemplation and the actual ways out of that purgatory and the exact timing that he was around and alive and did this work that we just lived through in 2020. That's what I end to 2021. That's literally how I'm connecting all of this. So this is not just coming out of my ass. This is literally coming from what the divine is doing and what the divine is channeling and what the divine has shown through history and actually using astrology to get back to that exact place to from a person who lived through that same thing that we all did and went through their nodal return with Saturn and Pluto on top of their uh, North Node and Capricorn and Pluto at the exact position of 26 degrees of Capricorn that we are in right now. Which would mean if we actually look at it Pluto 1284, then Pluto 1517 into 1518, but that was at the beginning. So you'd have to go to like 1517, 1520 and there to get where we we're at now. And that's when you start getting into the changes in the world. Oh wait, so, so uh, 1517, so no, you have to go farther. We have to go to like 1530s, 1534, 1533 and there to get to where Pluto is where it's at now. And that's when you start getting into the split of Catholicism and Christianity, uh, or Protestants basically. Um, and so that's interesting that we're going through it all at once now. When Dante did this work and at the time and when Dante was, when Saturn and Pluto were happening, there was already a major split between in the crusades of, and this is what I cover in Age of Deception, but it was the Christians that were fighting for the Holy Land and it was against the Muslims, right? So there's that big fucking, you know, battle that was going on there. There was no divide in Christianity, except later on when there was a divide in it by the protectors of Christianity being killed for spreading their work and we're going to go into that a, a little bit near the end but if we could zoom out craig so that hole i hope you all look at that hole that that's not just a hole what is a hole a hole is that it's not whole literally all they did is add a eight or a w to hole right to make it whole and then you just remove the w and you get a hole which is interesting that wrathful is right before that so when we get to those top ladders, to the lustful and the gluttonous, and you get to the top, which is paradiso, the earthly, earthly paradise, if you get to the top of that, which is where I think a lot of the things that are going on, especially with people that are bringing up, whether it's you know the child trafficking or stuff like that, there's something kind of weird that there's these weird forces and people that are living what they, they, they're idealizing as an earthly paradise with the top of the ladder of contemplation in their life being the lustful. So if we could zoom into the very top of the, the, the painting. That it's empty up there too. <laughs> that lust without true love I mean, it's kind of weird that it actually looks like both female or male anatomy parts, one receiving, one giving, but there's an emptiness about it too. And so it's like the idea of sex or an orgasm, and this is all going to come up in 2022 a lot with the nodes moving into Taurus and Scorpio and especially with uh, Jupiter and Neptune that are going to be conjunct is people are going to start to get more into this part of the story. The slothful will have been moved on and gluttony and so forth are going to become extreme or the lustful or, you know, because of this story that they're trying to use to keep you into purgatory, right? Like, you know, 
it's going to create like you're not allowed to go see this person or be in love with that person. They have this, they have the shot, you don't. So you're not allowed to be with them. You're not allowed to, you know, this is the crazy shit that's going to start to happen. And in many ways, it's keeping you in purgatory and like going to force people to go be lustful and go find, you know, and, and, you know, it's kind of disgusting and sick to me that people would actually start to look at people like, well, you're vaccinated, I'm vaccinated, like you're so hot. Because it changes the idea of what true divine love is and takes you out of the story and puts you into purgatory that people are, people, and you know, I've already seen it on dating sites. Like I'm vaccinated. Like that's nice. Do you have herpes? I, 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 you know, like, like, do you have AIDS? Like, I mean, like, you know, like, 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 like no concern about that. That's part of the joke I always do. Right. Like, you know, or like, do you believe in like freedom and God and love or like, you know, it's how girls are like, I'm looking for a guy with a dog, no cats. Or I'm looking for a guy with, you know, a job, stable job. You know, it's like this lustful energy of like false lust, which is like you, you're vaccinated. And that happens on the other side too. Like, you know, well, I'm unvaccinated and you're unvaccinated, right? It's creating division. And that's why I brought up Neptune at the beginning of this is we're seeing the division, even in the, 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 the structures as Pluto is finishing in Capricorn here, which 2023, Pluto comes into Aquarius in 2024, it officially enters in and stays, which is why I end each five-year cycle with some sort of crazy weird thing that happens to be in five-year cycles, which five is no coincidence that Mercury in Hermetic Alchemy is the representative of Mercury, five, and so that's why I use Mercury. And it's weird that the astrology gives me five-year cycles. I don't follow Saturn's seven-year cycles. I do, of course, as an astrologer. But in my way of presenting to you, it's five. So we're going to get out of this. And we're going to move on to remembering this 2012 prophecy, right? And understanding the duality of the shift that happened on December 21st of 2012 in the galactic alignment that the sun now reached the ecliptic of the galaxy. And we are now, and I'm going to stand up for this one, Craig, so maybe you can put on a wide camera. But, you know, this is, it depends, 13,000 to 12,000. So either it's 6,000 or 7,000 years, depending on how you want to look at it. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I use the 12,000 model, but... 6,000 years under, this is the galaxy. So it's a, it's a disc, it's a plane, right? And so December 21st, 2012, the sun reaches this point. But I've also shown in the 3D versions of how if you were to look at the galactic center, we saw at that time the buildup of Pluto reaching that and then Jupiter and Saturn all coming. So if I was looking at this from a bird's eye view of the sun looking at the galaxy, not only are we at the exact line of equinox, which would be equal day, equal night, equal of high or low, that we are in the middle, just like in purgatory with the sun in the galaxy, but we are in trying to contemplate both sides of the galaxy and the dark and the light. That's why it feels more like dark and light ever. This is another weird thing, not only from this five-year cycle from 2018 to 2023 and being in the middle, and I could put this sun right in the middle, but if I were to again put that five years there and that five years there and bring them all into the middle, and that five years is where we start to rise, and the five years prior to this is where we were, and the five years we're in now is in the middle. But you have to remember that when we start to rise, we are getting all the information, but we're getting it from both sides. I did a, a presentation in, uh, at the Conscious Life Expo in 2015, and I said, that's why you can live in a world where, I, I used a joke of a girl, I always use dating jokes because I, I think they're hilarious, but there was a girl who went in my bathroom and I was living in Hollywood in 2013 at the time, and she was like, you're using the wrong shampoo. You're not spiritual. <laughs> and I remember being like, fuck, man. Like, this bitch doesn't even fucking do anything every day for the fucking collective. But she's fucking trying to tell me that my fucking shampoo and my fucking conditioner fucking aren't fucking good enough and they're not spiritual? Really? But, so I used her as an example as, 
her doing her yoga and meditation and feeling like she's spiritual because of the shampoo that she uses in her hair. And down that same street, there's a person getting raped and getting shot in the head with a gun. And people try to go, gosh, you know, if we get rid of the guns or if we get rid of this, then that will go away. Or, you know, we get rid of this injustice or that injustice. I don't care what you try to fucking do. <laughs> you have to use astrology and go, this is where we're at in the time. At least there's more light that's happening every day. And you have to realize and trust in the divine that every day that goes by since 2012, the sun is reaching higher and higher and higher above this ecliptic. Now, this is a 6,000 year journey and it's a 3,000 year journey to here to the peak, which this would be summer and this would be winter and this would be spring. Or spring, and then this would be fall, when the sun falls and hits the ecliptic of the galaxy. But this is also the same wave that's on Earth. And, you know, you can watch Santos Bonacci. He does an amazing job of understanding the sound wave of life that we live in and the frequencies of life. But so when, if you're still on the fence about coronavirus and all that shit, the idea that, you know, things are always going to be so bad or that even this whole thing is the story that they're putting out there. It's not. There's a hidden story because the hidden story that the Mayans talk about is that there was the end of a world and they don't want to tell you that they threw you in a different world and made you still believe that you're in the world pre this. They're still making you live in this world and telling you that you have to do things to get into this world when you're already in this world. Uh, if we could zoom out so people could read the whole thing. And I, don't worry, I'm gonna get to Dante again in the nine things in much more deeper form. But I want to I want to go with this. The artificial and foreign energy that we are all feeling in our field. Now I know people are gonna be like, okay, I knew you're gonna bring up Uamu Ua, the, the asteroid that came in that the Harvard scientist just finally brought out here in 2021 and said that this is an alien. Whether you want to call it spaceship or just an alien energy, that conscious alien energy. It came in in 2017 from another solar system. So it's not an asteroid that came from our asteroid belt like you usually see, or a comet that's going around our... So this came from another galaxy. Well, no, not another galaxy. Well, it could have came from another galaxy, but it definitely came from out of our heliosphere, back beyond Pluto, where Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 are hanging out outside of there, which... Michael Luton and I did a great interview at Conscious Life or at uh, UAC, uh, United Astrology Conference 2018 in Chicago about this subject. And, 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 and he's been a very great um, astrologer that really has been putting the radar on this a lot. But, um, and then I've been the one putting the radar on Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. And we made the connection that as something from another foreign artificial to the divine or whatever that is watching our vibe came in our little instruments our ships went out also at that same time voyager 2 was reaching pluto to take the pictures before it would leave its helio sphere into the helio pause so the biggest thing though is not only that which we're going to try and make some connections to but does anybody know what those two pictures are of does anybody here in my in the room? I only have two, one audience member. What do you think it is, Craig? Yep, Craig. Craig got it right away. That is the quantum supercomputer. So, you have 
at the last two months before 2020 of October of 2019, when you have Saturn direct, Pluto direct in Capricorn, and you have Jupiter finishing in Sagittarius about to enter Capricorn, and the eclipses that are brewing, and Mars heading towards the galactic center and getting ready for the big conjunctions of the beginning of 2020, you have a quantum computer that is built by Google that is four, or I think it's, like, uh, it's more than just a four times faster than the supercomputer, but it can compute more than all the humans' brains could compute ever of all time in the matter of two seconds. You have a supercomputer that can take every metadata, and that's why I really love Edward Snowden and the work that he did, and I believe he's a patriot, I don't believe he's a traitor, to give the people the truth that, I mean, right now, my phone, your phone, what you're watching this on, your computer, everything is connected through Google, but more importantly, there is an artificial intelligence that has been using your energy. And there was a video that I just recently saw that I hadn't found for years about some of the research that was done in 1992, the last time Saturn was in Aquarius, that was they were able to control people with radio waves. So the military uses it, right? They have tanks. I was in the Navy. They used them in Iraq and they used them in Afghanistan and they don't like to talk about it much, but they did. I know I was in the military and I was working in a strike fighter squadron that went and killed lots of people. And I'm not proud of it, but I'm just letting you know that that's what I was in. And I can tell you that there they were pushing in cities with civilians to control crowd control to let, especially if you ever watch Hurt Locker and you watch how the IUDs were put everywhere. You know what they did? They brought in the tank. They brought in a fucking huge frequency emitter and they blasted people's brains with frequencies to have them subservient, freak out, anxiety, ears ring, do all this weird shit to have them not be able to fucking fight, okay? But in 1992, if the computer, the supercomputer, you have to remember, supercomputers have been around a long time. In 1992, when the internet, and this is also 1992, you have Saturn in Aquarius, but you also have Uranus and Neptune starting to conjunct in Capricorn at the same degrees in 93 three into 94 that Saturn and Pluto met in 2020, okay? That they already had it hooked into the internet. Yes, the internet was around in 92. It was not widespread on your Windows 95 yet, but through AOL, but they already were putting DNA into supercomputers. You can look this up. And if the supercomputer understood the person's DNA, it could then send through, and, and, and I know people are gonna be like, this is stuff I've heard, but it's, this, is gonna be, this is gonna creep you out when you mix this with the foreign energy and where I'm gonna go with all this. And with the astrology, that if they have your DNA, they can use frequencies off cell towers to control your mind and have you think certain thoughts, have you contemplate certain aspects, what you're feeling right now, in especially a time of contemplation in a North Node in Gemini and a Saturn in Aquarius with a Jupiter in Aquarius, And with Uranus and Taurus squaring Saturn, there's a lot about that there is a foreign en en entity 
that is trying to take your sovereignty away and take over because sovereignty is originally the definition of supreme power over whether it's a government, whether it's a place of land, or whether it's over people. And eminent domain is what Capricorn represents. So this came in with Capricorn. All, all of it, except that asteroid came in in 2017 with Saturn and Sag, and it wasn't figured out until the research was done in 2020 from that Harvard scientist that was like, this thing's flat every eight hours. It flips and reflects sunlight in a perfect form that nothing else would because only a flat surface. Remember, God doesn't build in lines. And especially when you look at that supercomputer, that is not built from God. And why do you think Space Force was brought out in 2020? It was with a high frequency satellite. What you're feeling is the intrusion on your sovereign being to keep you in purgatory, to keep contemplating what you should do and what you shouldn't do. What, 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 because every message you have made on your Instagram, your Facebook, your text message, every picture you have taken, your eye watch and what your heart rate is, your every part of your soul and being has already been processed and already given questions. I've said this before, but I'm letting people know that it goes way beyond even this, but I'm going to start here. That You can feel in the collective, there's an energy trying to take over the collective. The coronavirus narrative story is a story. It's not a thing. It's a story. It's like a Shakespearean story. It has a plot. It has its highs. It has its lows. It has its feeling when everything's going good and then it will crash. And then the terrible end of the story where then it all becomes okay in the end, all to give away your sovereignty. And it's no coincidence that the years, the year and a half right prior to this, well, while it was being developed is when atom bombs were dropped on Nagasaki and Hiroshima and when they were being built is when you you start to see UFO activity you start to see especially if you go to you know the very beginnings of Roswell in 1947 right after those bombs drop you get this really weird alien talk and identification of it and to me the act of th I mean this is the Roswell of today. That that supercomputer is alien. And this is something that this is my bomb I'm going to drop on people. That it, I, got I got channeled from spirit and it blew my mind. Because it is after Roswell that you start to see technology come out. That's when you start to see the idea of FM radio. That's when you start to see the idea of microchips and you start to be able to start to get into the ideas of this new wave of technology that hits the world. And whether you want to use the story of Independence Day, the movie, and how, how did you all figure out like life all oh, this thing crashed way back in the day and we figured we took the chips out of it and we copied it and we're, we're using it in society today that technology is alien and it is it's not human made that the same way that Uumuamua dropped 
itself in to check things out, it looks like a rock to most people. But those that tap in can feel that it's watching. And we are being watched. It was like watching its baby being born. But it had been watching because, if, and, and this is what blew my mind was, for the last two years in spiritual dance music, I've been using the War in the World, War of the Worlds, radio broadcast. That, of course, was a fictional story that people took to belief on the radio, because it was like one of the first stories that was very intense in 1930. That when Pluto had come into existence, that scared people. Right? Like, what the fuck? And the whole idea of War of the Worlds is that the aliens were already here. They didn't show up. They already were here. They were buried in the earth. That the alien energy that people try to talk about, and they keep, they keep looking for all these like signs. When, when actually there's plenty of signs that, you know, aliens or any of that stuff were already here whether you'll get Mayan pictures of actually the the Mayan the head I forgot what it was it, it, the, the head Mayan prophet that used 2012 as the prediction point at the end of the world uh he leaves in a spaceship like it's pretty fucking nuts in the picture um but technology so I'm talking astrology with you all, cosmology that are connected to the cosmos and the astro, which is the astrology, which is the connection to the divine. Technology is not human. Why are they so concerned with your DNA for a coronavirus by swabbing something up your nose? Is it to get really a test when we've got the actual data? Like, let's use some data for a second. There are a lot of false negatives and a lot of false positives. Do you really think they gave a fuck about that? If they cared so much about people having it or not having it, why didn't they care more about making the tests more accurate? Why were there so many close to 35 to 45 percent false positives and 45 to 55 percent false negatives you'd think they'd even be more upset and pissed that there were more false negatives because that means that you have it it's all part of the story by the way but your dna with the shot is to be altered and, and, you know, there's a lot of people trying to say that that's not what's happening. That's what's happening. Do the research on their own sites. When they are re-messaging your DNA, and they're talking about DNA, and if you know anything about Palladian channeling and the warnings that the Palladians had back in the 80s with Barbara, Barbara Marshak, it was all about that your light code is your DNA that the helix of your light code and your DNA is to activate all those. I'm going back into the old David Palmer, Leo King at the beginning and what my whole entire blogs and the first videos and everything were all about. Ironically enough, before December 21st of 2012, I got the warning and I got the signs and I followed the signs. I even have a video you can watch. It's on YouTube called An Astrologer's Tale about 2020 or 2020, 2012. And the whole Mayan prophecy. And, and that that's what got me into Everybody asked me what got my, me into astrology. AOL, and I found an HTML page about the Mayan prophecy. That is what got David Palmer, the Leo King, in 1998 into astrology on AOL in my room on 56K modem. Which begs the question, the information that we get in the world today, through the technology, through everything... When we talk about the fake media, or Trump did, or we all can see that the media is obviously not telling the whole story, is it really that it's just some people in this, you know, agenda? 
Or is the agenda from control of an other foreign energy, not China, not another foreign country, but a foreign entity, which is, to me, we can call it alien, but it's the dark. And when you're at a midpoint, which in astrology, a midpoint is a point between two planets. So if you have a planet at zero Cancer and you have a planet at zero Leo, the midpoint is going to be in between that, which will be 15 Cancer, okay? With being in the midpoint of where we're at, with being in the midpoint of where we're at in the galactic story, with being in the midpoint of where we're at, with Saturn's journey through both its signs of Capricorn and Aquarius of control, these two things are connected. But with the asteroid, it's just more of the message of there's something watching us. What behind the scenes that nobody's talking about is... Whether you want to use the matrix as well, I mean, already looking at that quad computer, I already think of the matrix. I already think of the weird, you know, plugging in. And, and you know, I like Elon Musk, but the idea of plugging something into my brain does not fucking thrill me. And never will I do that. That will be the future of what we call of us being non-vaxxers at the moment or non-complying to these crazy experimental technologies because the idea of crazy experimental technologies of a physical world of Taurus, Uranus and Taurus of a paradise is being made from a place of peer pressure and was made from a place of control the same way that darkness and sin and things that keep you in purgatory are trying to keep you from realizing that you already are on the paradise of earth to reach the ultimate paradise of heaven through the realms of the spheres of the divine that, that, that this isn't about food and what you eat or stuff like that. This is about being aware of these weird frequencies that come in, that the fact that you can feel them and the fact that you might feel off about them or it might f make you scared, it's, I'm not here to try and say that to be afraid. And I'm not trying to also say to not pay attention to that fear because I want you to pay attention to that fear, that that's a good sign that they are having trouble controlling you because you can overly always outdo with the divine. The ultimate immunity is not about coronavirus. That's some excommunicated bottom of purgatory shit. It's the lustfulness of the technology that has been driving us since 1992 that it's the lustfulness of the instant gratification of buying the new device, of buying the interconnect. I, I, I love technology. I built a whole network. I built a TV network. I built a studio. I built a stage. And even doing this presentation, to be able to you watch this on an app with using cameras and a projector and being able to have project it to where I could see, but where you could see the actual form or you could see me on the screen do it, to having all the computers talking to each other while Craig's over there on a computer that's doing massive amounts of billions of code at a, a second to be able to transmit it to you while processing all these high-end 4K cameras and compress it all and use a, a crazy fucking computer that I had to build by hand in order to do all this. So you're talking to somebody who loves technology, but at the same time, I do have a lustfulness for it. And I have to be aware of that in myself. I just bought a, I just got a new place. I had a TV. I have two TVs. I could have been, I could have just said, Hey, the front office, that's the open office. Basically nobody claims it has the last 4k OLED 3d TV in it that I love. I like watching Disney movies in 3D with 3D glasses. It's fucking crazy. I can turn anything into 3D. They got rid of that for some reason. I don't know why. But I could have taken that to my new place. But no, I went out and bought another fucking TV that arrives tomorrow because of my lustfulness for technology.
with the false profit of that being paradise is technology. So the technology of a vax passport, the technology of this vaccine, that's what I'm trying to show you is that it's technology that in the lustfulness for it, the euphoria that people are going to get a, a new technology and an experiment into their arm or the even us when we get to go get the new phone and everything is more connected to giving this system more fucking system. Saturn, Pluto, Jupiter in Capricorn, Pluto still in Capricorn, the layers. And you can look at that supercomputer, whether it's from the top picture or the bottom picture. If we could zoom into the bottom picture of the supercomputer, and that's a quad. So you can see the quad processors in this thing. That thing is gets so hot that they have to keep it literally away from things, which is how they're even doing this world today, right? Like stay six feet apart. Well, look at that thing is so fucking hot and so fucking full of a virus on humanity that it's segregated from everything else. But if you look at that thing, it looks like the layers of purgatory in itself. And at the bottom is what's excommunicated at the top is paradise where it understands and gets through the layers of purgatory of your data and information because its paradise is understanding you and knowing how to control you. It's not crazy when I uh, was on the phone with my parents last week and we were talking about something because I was moving and I was talking about like, yeah, I was going to get like new furniture. My stepdad said something like, I don't know, maybe you should get some, I forgot what it was. I think it was like a fucking table or something like that and literally then he was on his phone he was going on his instagram he's like what the fuck they're fucking showing me fucking tables now like you know what i mean like it, it it's really true i mean i know everybody's experienced it i experienced it myself this is not something that we're manifesting because oh i'm thinking about and, may, and maybe it is that's the other part is I, i'm gonna always look at things from all sides is this foreign energy the fact that we are all living in a matrix now that truly is like the movie the matrix that is a computer system that they just are upgrading the computer system and now it's getting fucking crazier and the contemplation is getting more because when you add more levels to purgatory or you add more levels to contemplation and processing in the mind and we are in a north node gemini we are in a gemini time in our life with the eclipses and sag the idea of contemplation enhances extremely when you have a quad computer in the world that is manifested the same way that we have voyager one and voyager two that have manifested outside the heliosphere that are holding gold a gold record literally with the beatles on it with elvis on it with every language in the world and um i think uh I think it's like a Lincoln speech. Or, uh, somebody might need to confirm that actual data on that one, but I know it's a pre there's a presidential speech on there. Might be JFK, actually. Um, but, you know, it, it might sound crazy, but, I mean, you can even see the eyes on this thing. And... The head, it looks to me like an SS soldier in the, in the Nazis. It looks to me like in Terminator, it looks to me like artificial alien intelligence when I look at this thing. This does not look like human. And that's what I'm trying to say is that there's pretty good, you know, evidence to when the last time Uranus was in Taurus, when Hitler was running the Nazis, to where he was obsessed with the occult, but he was also obsessed with technologies, which, you know, America went to war because of Pearl Harbor, which happened after the Mars retrograde that happened in 1941, and right when Mars came direct and it had reached a couple degrees forward. We haven't seen a Mars retrograde full in Aries since 1941 that we saw in the end of 2020. We went into a war. We got attacked. What did Joe Biden just do yesterday to Russia? Put sanctions on Russia for the attack or hack on the election system and the whole entire, what's it called again? It's called Sky... I think it's called, 
I'll, I'll find it in one sec. Because the name is everything. Solar winds. Here, I'm going to put this up, and then when this is done, somebody's going to have to push the computer back, uh, por favor, to uh, um, keynote once we get there. All right, perfect. So this was April 15th, today. The Biden administration targeted Russia with sweeping sanction and diplomatic expulsions Thursday, punishing Moscow for its interference in the 2020 U.S. election. Kind of interesting, like, what's, what did they interfere with? And, and is it really them, too? It's solar winds cyber attack and its ongoing occupation and severe human rights abuse in Crimea with the whole thing with Ukraine. But the solar winds... How weird that we right now, when you look at the sun, the solar wind activity is extreme because of the magnetic energy I keep talking about. But more importantly, it was a silent attack, the same way the Japanese did a silent attack on America. But the weird thing is this silent attack happened at these, when I was telling you all that there was going to be an attack like Pearl Harbor, it exactly happened at the exact same time that I said it would at the end of last year when Mars was in, this, in Aries after the retrograde, exactly as Pearl Harbor happened. So there is a secret war going on in the background, but there's a lot of misinformation. There's a, always a different story behind it all, right? But many security experts remain alarmed about the large Chinese-linked act of Microsoft's exchange email service. So it's a lot more. It's like, why is he not going after China? That's one of the weird things. But it was a major hack. And Solar Winds had massive amount of information. Okay. And I think that it's interesting, you know, so if you go to, you know, like the solar um, magnetic storm 2021, let's just put that in. Bottom line, in March 2021, scientists said they've unearthed new eyewitness accounts from a 1582 solar storm that startled sky watchers across the globe. They were glad to have these reports, which might help them understand long-term patterns in solar activity and its effects on Earth, awaiting the next historic solar storm. Saturn square Uranus. That the magnetics on the Earth, look at this, is March 31st, 2021. This is a couple of weeks ago. The seahorse-shaped solar flare erupted from an active region of the sun on August 7th, 1972. It was one of a number of powerful solar storms in 1972. It's exactly where Chiron was in Aries in 72 is where it is right now. Chiron was found, or Chiron was in Aries in 69. We are three years into Chiron and Aries, and now 2019, 2020, 2021, now we're in 1972, Chiron and Aries. That cause earthly effects. For example, widespread electrical and communication grid disturbances through large portions of North America, as well as satellite disruptions. So this whole solar wind thing, there was also, of course, everybody knows about the great event in 1859, which is at the end of Neptune and Pisces, which we are getting very close to because we are at 1857 with Neptune and Pisces. So when you start, you start putting all the, 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 the facts together, and the reason why I'm bringing up solar storms, the reason why I'm bringing all this up, so we can get on this now, because um, I'm, I'm getting close to uh, ending here, because I got about 30 minutes left. We start at four. Um, is that... Why is Bill Gates trying to stop the sun? It's not climate change. I hate to tell you all that. Some people are still on the climate thing. Go look up. The same way that the solar winds are, they're affecting all the planets and heating up the planets at the same rate at the same time that we are, and they're all going through magnetic weird shit that we are at the same time. So the evil's plan of technology is threatened 
under solar storms. Wait, what? No, it's uh, it's just Keynote. You just open Keynote. No, it might need to be right-clicked on, just opened and shown, or just use all your fingers and swipe up at once. Like if you use all four fingers and swipe up on a laptop, Yep, there we are. No problem. That the the threat is on from the divine. Don't be afraid of the sun. Don't be afraid of the sun and not only if we are gonna use the whole vitamin D thing, that's really what this life is about. I know vitamin C and all these things are important in our lives and I was using a very enhanced way of showing you that the divine is your immunity at the top, but the divine is also connected to the planets and the sun. But that the sun comes through, not only every day for you, as Horus rises on the horizon in Horus's zone, and we know where we're at in the hour based off where Horus is on the horizon every day, and then till it sets into Set's world in the darkness, where where does that fucking supercomputer live? In the fucking dark, inside, like a little fucking bitch. So don't be afraid because when you have Neptune reaching the exact point in the next year and a half to where the biggest solar storm was that actually on Earth in our, in, in our recorded history of like modern times of the last 200 years almost actually took out the ability to do the Morse code and the telegraph. 1972... Chiron, Aries, same position as this year. Uranus square Saturn this year is the massive other higher dimensions, which it's at fallen Taurus, which is why during Hitler and he was looking to go back into that, he was looking into all this technology and all these occult things. And then why did America, and then I, I went into the whole thing about America, so I have to catch myself back up that America and Russia, ironically, I've been talking about this for so long. I don't even know. I, I, I'm, and some people might not know I have, but I don't know. I probably could pull out 100 videos out of my ass and be talking about, even on public television, Craig was there. It's on my fucking website in my press. I talk about Russia and America. Like, why are they not friends when they're putting people up into space together all the way up until, you know, 2019 when... Tesla, which actually SpaceX, decides to partner with the government and push the Russians out because it's a same Jupiter, Saturn, and Aquarius race to space the same way that JFK did the race to space against Russia. But what the main thing here is that America and Russia team up to take over and get rid of Hitler when Japan was the number one enemy. Like Germany never came to our shores and never did anything here, but we wanted to go help our allies. But really Brit Britain was hammered from the London bombings and their Navy was destroyed. And they also lost a bunch of their Navy due to the fact of the Dunkirk hellhole situation that happened and had to use private ships for, to get people out. This is all Uranus Taurus stuff into Uranus Gemini. And that's where the nodes are coming to is also in this next six months, the nodes are going to cover World War II at its peak of where Uranus was. And North Node and Uranus are heading towards each other right now 
over these next two years to finish Rising Through the Darkness that one of my biggest predictions has been World War III, but not from the way that you see it. It's the world war of the divine against the dark. And that's really what it is. And even it was then because, but you know, what's sad is that it looks like the dark was beaten, but really the dark continued on through the atom bomb and through von Braun and through propaganda that was taken from Hitler and the Nazis and just integrated into Russia and integrated into America, who are both going at each other again, which will then become best friends after China or somebody will be threatening them again. It's going to happen all over again. So don't fear this World War III because it's hidden. And it's for your DNA to control you. Look it up. And when you have a, super com a quad supercomputer that can compute every, every message you've sent and all the metadata in two seconds, everybody's data that has ever been recorded of all time in two seconds. You give it a question. I always use this, like, what, what time of day and what emotional state do people need to be? Or is there a time of year? Or are there certain planets that have to be in alignment? Or you could ask this computer anything, and it will take all the data of like all the breakups that happen on Messenger, Instagram, phone calls, whatever, all the times when people are upset, all the people times of what people are talking about, what would trigger them. So everything that you saw in 2020 was a controlled storyline. And, and this is where people are gonna think I'm crazy, but I'm using it not because I'm Republican or because I support Trump or because of Q. To me, I've been saying this shit before the Q shit and I've always denounced that Q to me is like lightweight shit. I think it's like kindergarten. That, that, that supercomputer In every AI story, in every movie about AI is smarter than the one that tries to build it. The first story of an AI computer is Stanley Kubrick in 2001 A Space Odyssey when David the computer knows that he was going to try and get shut off and tells the supercomputer tells, you know, him, I, I know you're about to turn me off. I heard you. I listened to you. And I'm not, I'm not going to, he's like, open the doors. No, nope, I'm not going to do it. So the people that feel that they have control of this computer don't have control. And you can look at that asteroid coming in. And there's a lot of other weird shit going on out there that we don't know about of whatever's coming in that is in control and that is playing with and controlling the controller that thinks it's in control to play a story that and i'm going to give our all humanity because the, why i don't like the q movement or anything like that is because they look at people as all evil when they don't even realize that when it comes to evil and i'm not trying to give these people credit either i'm just trying to say that you need to maybe take one step and hermetically look at it from all angles and actually realize that the controllers of these supercomputers don't realize that they got fucking controlled upon and that they are acting out the story in which of a control story, which the astrology is showing us, the same way that the church in the late 1200s and the 1300s fucking eventually killed the people that were defending and holding the line for Christianity at the time and giving safe passage. And there was a time in that period where you had to pay, you had to have a piece of paper in order to go to the Holy Land through the Crusades. And then the church realized that they could start selling it. What do you think the vaccine passport is too? This is all from the same transit of 20, 1284 through 85 that brought and brought into what we saw then is what we're seeing now. That even there was energy that had taken over the church for control, for power over kings and, 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 and any queen of nations and to wear the three-tiered tiara and say, yo, I'm the, I'm the one that's going to tell you what I'm going to do. You're not going to tell me what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell you. 
including in Egypt, when you went to go to the afterlife, it was the idea that you had to give gifts and you were weighed upon on which, how much you offered. And if you didn't have enough, you went to purgatory in their way, which the Book of the Dead would talk about resurrecting people from that place. Or enough gifts brought you to the afterlife of eternal life with Ra and the all-seeing eye, that you would be part of that in the higher echelon of the same way that purgatory and the top of purgatory is paradise with the tree is the all-seeing eye of Ra, that you are aware and infinitely in the universe as part of it forever and a controller of the universe or whatever you want to call it. That what we're seeing is humanity being taken advantage of already in the story of Terminator 2, which I think did come out in uh, Saturn in Aquarius in 1991 and 1992, if I remember right, that Skynet created a microchip that they had taken from the 80s when they had found in Terminator 1 the first T-1000 of Arnold Schwarzenegger and had finally duplicated it to create their own AI technology that was trying to be stopped by John Connor and his mom, Sarah Connor, that we are already past that point. But the good news is that the solar flares and the solar energy and what I think people are going to have to prepare themselves for in the future, that you know, don't be afraid of the technology so much. But if you want to get out of purgatory in your life, find a way to disconnect from it. I have to learn it. You think love's going to work with you distracted on your phone? You getting another distraction, another distraction? Another, that's just honest truth from fucking coming from my Leo heart which is opposite of Aquarius. Like, use it as a tool, but don't be lustful in it. Realize that it is the narrative of the whole story being controlled by something that has conceptualized from, because we did not create these chips. We did not create it. It is clear from just looking at time that when an atom bomb goes off and there was even talks that even at, at that time that the, uh, the Nazis and Hitler were finding ways to communicate with the extraterrestrials or the people on the other side because I don't believe they're physical. We might see that asteroid but I look at that as a whole ton of energy behind that asteroid. Does that make sense? Like what you don't see is what's powerful what you see is bland and boring same thing with that fucking supercomputer what you see looks boring and like typical person down the street or especially i'll just like i don't give a fuck i'm real right like like typical chick would be like oh that's nice like show me your bedroom that's like got like do you have a cat or a dog right like i don't want to see the supercomputer right because it just is like boring it's just like okay that is every emotion every talk every grunt when you were masturbating, everything you looked at, what your face looked like when you were looking at your phone, when you were mad, everything you look like when you're taking up shit in the bathroom, every emotion, every feeling, every thought that you express out, the one thing that they don't know how to do yet is get inside of you which is what I am putting the warning out and have been the whole time to not fuck around with these experiments to alter, to get inside of you that even revelations and the mark of the beast and any of the esoteric aspects or even understanding Pluto and what Pluto tries to do to take control is like a tick 
which, you know, Lyme disease is a real thing. And there's proof now that the government fucking created ticks that fucking were more extreme with Lyme disease that went out of control and they just hover that up is, is to bury inside of you. And so purgatory is you not paying attention to that there is a system of control and feeling whatever is artificial is not from the divine. An artificial meaning a foreign energy that is trying to come across as the savior or as the thing that will change the world when it will not. The astrology, if, if we would have reached 2020 and we would have reached 2021 with Saturn not square Uranus and it was in trine, I would have said, this is the technological, with Jupiter Saturn, I would have said this is the technological evolution. But that's what's being sold with Saturn and Jupiter is that this is the technological revolution. The last time that Jupiter and Saturn met in 2000 was in Taurus. And what was square? Saturn and Jupiter to Uranus. Uranus was in Aquarius, Jupiter and Saturn were in Taurus. And what was promised to the world in 2000 was a dot-com era that was a bubble that burst, but also a financial system that went radically out of control and a financial system uh, and a glorification of beauty and a glorification of things through technology and through social media and through oh, the last 20 years of the last Jupiter, Saturn, and Taurus, square Uranus, right? That you would find your value through community and through technology through community, which I think a lot of us did, but I think we found the real gold, which was not the vanity or not the attention or not the money or not the anything that we created that that is natural, but the things that were artificial that were not ever working out for us to take us to paradise of heaven, of truth, of feeling good and glorious, that the connection to the divine is what was Uranus and Aquarius was trying to bring us to. After I go to the beginning of the slides where I show Uranus at the top to the closest to the divine in the paradigm of the story, and so the clash right now is control against the people. But with Uranus and Taurus, you know, that paradise is when you break your vows to the artificial world that has been installed everywhere. It is artificial for a human being to stay six feet away from somebody because our energy field is six feet apart. People already know this shit. But what I'm trying to say is that this is a foreign energy that you are going to have to deal with that tries to creep in. And no, this is not about, I mean, I do. I mean, you know, maybe I'm a little old school, but you know, I do, I do wear organite. Like I do wear fucking for me, I also wear my mold, my moldavite because I fucking want to be able to feel when the foreign energy is weird and around. And I also want to, like, not be fucked with the frequency. This is a frequency war of taking away your natural state. And you are going to go through it whether you like it or not. No matter if you go live in Idaho or you go out into the middle of nowhere, the frequencies are coming from satellites down on you so you can't escape it in the woods you can't escape it the only one that's trying to escape it that's a capricorn right now is jeff bezos who quit amazon and is building an underground fucking bunker in texas he thinks he can with pluto right now in capricorn because he's a capricorn he thinks he can bury himself away from it but he can't even do that because the frequencies of magnetism are underneath the soil in the earth that you're going to have to learn how to feel out when it's not authentic and when it's not art when it's artificial because i can't give you the truth in knowing who the fuck it is i can't give you that i can't tell you what that 
weird dark force if there's even an attachment and identity to it i don't know i mean the, you could use the ex the the past and you can use it as the devil you could use it as lucifer you could use it as evil you could use it as whatever that you want but we know the vibration is just not of human and natural and from the divine that brings us life force and positivity and heart and love and all the things in life that we need to feel and it is trying to put us into this purgatory. And this is why Dante got fucking slammed was by bringing this information out. Not this exact information, but really actually it's the same information that, that we all are humans and that we all struggle, but we have to be aware of what the struggle is and that we do not have to sit in this purgatory, that we do not have to go through hell, that yes, we have to go through the strives and the troubles of life, but that the, the, the divine comedy is that we all do end up going to the greatest place in the world, which is the paradise of heaven of the highest of the high, because we are from the highest of the high. But when you keep feeding the fear, you are away from that. And you know what? I truly believe in my heart you will go to the highest of the high, no matter what you do in this life. But I'm trying to tell you that when you're on this earth and you're in this experience right now, you don't have to sit and struggle by buying this story that is literally, I am not kidding, and I will sound like the crazy person, just how they're calling the Harvard scientist that th thinks that this thing is an alien object crazy, and all of his peers, and he's like, none of my peers even did any research on it. They haven't even looked, and they're, they're calling me crazy, and I have the data, and I looked at it, and it's not natural. Not natural. And again, nature itself is not trees, not oceans, and not hikes on Runyon Canyon. Nature is human nature. That means if it's not natural, it's not from human nature. People in the health and wellness community have gotten lost there, and I'm not saying it's bad, only you could eat organic and just be all natural and be completely lost in purgatory. Because in all magic with the K books, it is nature with a human, not, and it's also showing an unnatural third breast usually, which they use in the movie Total Recall, which is all about implanting a story into your head that you feel like you lived the vacation on, but you didn't. Um. Trying to move this slide. Let's see if it'll, oh yeah, here we go, okay. So I was talking about Saturn and Uranus in square, right? And so I'm going to stand up for this one. So to me, this is Uranus and Taurus right here, which there she is again. She was on the tree of life in alchemy. And she is wrapped around the zodiac and wrapped around the understanding of that life. And she is beaming towards the angels. And she is sitting on top of the earth or the sphere and you can see down here those that are stuck right slaving away i got my passport to go to work whenever in any i'll give you a secret about alchemy and about hermeticism Whenever you see somebody pointing, whether it's up or it's down, there's a, there's a significance to it. When it's pointing down, it is lost in lopsided mathematics, which that is a sphere of hell or purgatory itself. When anybody is looking up, it is starting to look higher into life it is starting to look out at and you can see they give you they give you this is this makes no sense okay makes no sense 
especially a box and square, right? If you understand geometry and sacred geometry is not a place to go. So this is being trapped in a box that's all over. And so it sucks because I have friends, I have family, I have people who are like, I'm going to just do this because I can keep my job at my place where I do it and not paying attention to anything and just being stuck in the box and missing out on the fucking heaven. And they, and it sucks. I'll be honest. And I'm not going to lie. I mean, I don't want to get Tony Robbins on you all. But like I've been successful this life because I fucking apply this shit in my life fully. And so I'm trying to get others to do it too, but it's fucking hard. It's fucking hard when, you know, all my buddies in high school or everybody that I know fucking from my past and shit always like, how do you fucking make what you do happen? Or they're so, their eyes light up like a Christmas tree. And to me, I'm blessed beyond belief, but that's not what I'm blessed about. I don't give a fuck. I'm looking at my, the cars that I love, but I don't love them enough to be over there sitting in them. I haven't even driven them for fucking over a week or whatever. I don't even care because I only have been caring about how to get this message to the divine out 24 fucking seven. And that is also understanding that I'm living my life and I'm making my choices and I'm going and making sure that I don't end up here and that I end up at the top. So with this Uranus and Taurus, the Uranus and Taurus is trying to bring us to this beautiful heaven and see there's a triangle, which is always a sextile or a trine not a box, not a square, of the divine, trine divine, square is bare, and music is another form of frequency in the nine chords of distribution throughout the system, and the nine numbers to the nine, there's more chakras, but really there's this nine, element and the, the the vibrations of music and the different octaves and understanding if you're in flow is the same way i've always said the planets are like the planets are playing jazz i'm gonna dance to jazz if that's the notes that are playing out i'm gonna read the notes and play them in my life and follow them if it's playing fucking polka i'm gonna play polka if it's playing hard fucking death metal i'll play death metal and that's where you as a soul have a problem is that when it plays the tune that you don't want i do not want saturn and jupiter and aquarius i'm a leo i do not i do not want your honest and taurus i'm a leo but I got to play with the fucking music at that shit. And that shit ain't stopping me from still staying in here. Because if that's what the music notes come out, I'm learning new music. I'm admiring new music. But when you're just that person that stays on the same station, and that's the reason why I'm a DJ is it taught me so much about having to like mix new genres and get over the peer pressure of underground house DJs that t call me a piece of shit or even dating a fucking DJ that t called me a glam DJ because I chose to put vocals in my fucking music because it wasn't tech house. Like straight up and having to break up with her and having to go through that shit. And that was Venus and Capricorn retrograde, which you're going to have at the end of this year. But that's the kind of shit that I'm trying to show you all is that if you really want to embody yourself out of this purgatory in life, you have to be whole with a W in this whole thing. Because if we bring down to her again, she is wrapped up in even the wholeness of the angels and she is in her wholeness. And why do you think the angels always have a harp? because it is the higher vibration in the music. And look at, there is the beginning of the Zodiac Aries and there is the Pisces, the fish. And this is where Neptune is coming towards in the Zodiac of the split and the split between the beginning and the end of astrology. And so you could either be deceived in this age of deception and be lost in the tale of two fishes, the tale of two stories, or you could be clear on what is courageous, on what is divine, and what is strong, and what is powerful, and what is the bringer of the exaltation of the sun, which is being defined in who you are, loving the identification, and believe it or not, the mixture of the, a understanding of your soul and your ego. 
Because it's not just soul and it's not just ego, it is both. And most people play just soul or most people just play just ego. They don't know how to do both. And that is what Neptune is teaching in the divide that we are in in our lives. So if we uh, come out of it real quick and then we go to the one to the right real quick. The square to Saturn in Aquarius is, these are what you're seeing on the streets right now. That people are in strife from the wrathfulness that is overcoming them and the fears because there's this force out there that's trying to be of the divine and the natural and the, to take you up to Venus of Taurus, which is the garden, which is the, the paradise. And then Saturn's here in Aquarius at the bottom. And with the square to Uranus and Taurus, thinking that, you know, again, this is where you get into other parts of purgatory, like envy and excommunication. And all these things deal with the bottom, which deal with what Saturn is, is at the bottom. Aquarius and Capricorn, right? That's the, that's the bottom. The top is the sun and the moon and Leo and Cancer. And we are in the opposite of that. I've showed that through many astrology aspects. But when you get that idea of Saturn square Uranus, it's you are seeing this world while there's people, you're, you're living maybe in that other world. But the clash of like how these two have to work together and get along. And some people might believe that their divine notion is this crazy radical technology. And then there's people out there clashing. But the main clash is why are people attacking each other when they should be attacking everything that is taking them away from the other side if we just kind of like, kind of, that is taking them away from that. Because everybody deserves this. So all souls matter to the divine. You know, with, with all this stuff coming out of all whatever matters, they never finish it with, well, well where, who does it matter to? Like, so it defines what, who matters, but where does it matter to? All souls matter to the divine. And that's the clash is trying to pick, and, and you're stuck in purgatory when you start picking because you're excommunicating everywhere out, which is the lowest level of purgatory. And I'm going to stand up because this is the old, I'm, this is, I haven't been in front of this slide. If we could back out, um, this is the oldest slide. This is, uh, this is from age of, if you can go all the way out. It all lies, lie, like lying, but it lies in Rome. And it still does. It still does. Because we're still in the age of Pisces, that there is still a majority of the planet that is still buying the story. This is in Rome when Constantine has his vision of Christ and the people having to start accepting this is the way to go. Instead of looking at the Holy Roman Empire well, actually, it wasn't holy, but just the Roman Empire that was more, you know, triumphant, I guess you could say, um, that was connected to multiple gods, or at least looking at divine and senates and republics and magistrates. That was the end of the age of Aries, which it was very defined. So you can't really look at the, the Romans as like, and especially, you know, like the Romans get a lot of shit originally um, because of course the killing of Jesus, right? Or at least the Spartans do. But you have to remember that like the main part of this story is that it was the age of Aries. Like if in that age you had to define yourself and the Romans did it the best. And the Romans were the ultimate one and they defined a world that we are living in today, whether it's the columns that we use in the Capitol or in the White House or in all areas of life. And in three, 325 AD, there's this, you know, 
vision that Constantine has that he sees Christ because people have been talking about Christ for 325 years and decides to get the Senate and to get the magistrates together and create what we know as Christianity today, which you can watch Age of Deception and we'll, I'm not going to go through it, but you have to realize that right now at this time, even with the Pope, right? Like the Pope's coming out now and it's like this, this is okay now or this is not okay now or this is okay. And there was a there was a um, archbishop of America that wrote a letter to President Trump before President Trump left office with his deep concerns about the church itself and in the control of people through the narrative of this coronavirus story and how it was taking away people from their liberties and freedoms and that he admired President Trump and he went against the church, he went against the Pope. And this guy was the archbishop of pretty much America. So when you have bishops, and there were some videos at the, in the middle of last year, 2020, that had, you know, whether it was priests or bishops from, they were in Rome and they were leaving the Vatican and they were doing live videos on their phones being like, it's fucked up in there. <laughs> like fucking, they're fucking selling this story too, right? And one of the first places besides um, China during the coronavirus that got hit the most was Italy, but ironic that it hit the northern part of Italy where people were in their life where they're, you know, and there's nothing wrong with living in a more easygoing life, but it was slothfulness. And this is an old slide, and I want to, how does the real meaning of poor apply today? Because some people, it's a long video, I know. But I'm just going to cut down to that, you know, we talk a lot about financial and economic needs and people are wondering in, this is where I'm starting to address the things that High Vibers wanted to know about your economic aspects. You make money by not feeling that you're poor and no, I'm not saying poor because you don't have money. Poor was not the opposite of rich, but rather the opposite of potent. So when you're not potent, Taurus, right? The smell is potent. That's good fragrance. That's, that's Taurus, right? So I don't buy cheap cologne. And no, Craig, I don't buy Armani Exchange cologne. <laughs> I love Craig. We have the funniest jokes with, with each other. But I like to buy the real fucking French potent shit from France. Not even American cheap alcohol-based stuff. Which referred to military and social power. So who has all the money? Oh, whoever's in control of the military and the social power? That means you're potent if you have that. So take it today that you have military, which is Mars. You have your own identity and you have social power over yourself, meaning that you control your own social narrative because you stay to your truth of identity. That's with people who have money and power in life, are people who do not be followers and follow the narrative, but stand up and speak for themselves and don't fall into peer pressure and control the social norms within their own identity and own that within themselves and listen to the divine only. To be poor was to be humble or powerless. And I believe that humbleness is wonderful and it is an extremely, and especially compassion mixed with humbleness. But you have to also know that it did not equate to economic need, the term poor. It meant like you don't have the power to step into your own truth. You're weak and powerless because you're too humble to own your power. And that is something that is the reason why the Knights Templar were killed was because they now became a competitor not of economic need, even though they tried to say they were because they started getting currency and shit like that. So watch out. And I'm a crypto person, but watch out. Right? Once the banks start getting fucking beat, once Apple just got beat, once the government start getting beat, once the stock market gets beat, oh, 
That's the Knights Templars, or those in these other realms. But it was because they stood up for their military and social power, which was for God, and for the people that wanted to come to the Holy Land and, 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 and be part of Jesus' death and where he did his work. In the social context of the early 12th century, secular power lay with those who bore arms. So this goes into the gun control thing today. And those who commanded them. Since the early centuries of Christianity, public sinners who had committed grievous acts such as murder, adultery, and apostasy were obligated by religious authorities to renounce arms forever. Among other forms of penitence. There were those who, although completely innocent of such crimes, voluntarily subjected them. I can't read the bottom line because it's not showing up on here. Maybe you can zoom into the very bottom. Um, subjected themselves to the same program of atonement as an act of piety, which means I'm going to be humble and do the right thing because, you know, I can't stand all the shootings and I can't whatever. And you know what? I'm not here. Here you go. And I'm, I'm doing the right thing for God. But who's in power is the person that's controlling the social power and the social dynamics. So with Saturn and Jupiter and Aquarius, another part of purgatory is you giving away your power, whether it's arms, whether it's giving away anything that you're not even committing a crime for. Uh, um, I'm not committing a crime by wearing a mask. That's not a law. It's a mandate. It's a recommendation. You're giving your power away, being like, you know what? Everybody else is doing it, so I'm going to fucking put it on. Like, you know what I mean? Like, everybody else is quarantining, so I'm going to quarantine, even though uh, I'm listening to scientists and doctors that are all being censored everywhere, but we're only hearing one central voice. Mm. Don't be afraid to be a Templar Knight. And don't think that Friday... Why do you think they just throw for Halloween and for all things Friday the 13th. It is subjected into your brain, into your mind that you should never be this because they all were killed for doing that, for following their potency of themselves. So you want to make money in your life? You want to have a better family life? You want to have a better life? Be potent. And don't be afraid of being killed because that's not going to happen because that transit that happened with saturn pluto jupiter in 1284 into 1285 was with the with, with is was was the north node so it was we were bound to fail and uranus was in cancer opposing that transit meaning it was against the people and their safety we had it with trying to uranus and with the south node meaning it's the illusion that there's a potent energy out there when it's the weakest energy trying to trick you into giving away your potency So in the end, don't worry, there's a couple more slides, but in the end, you really are awake. But to be really awake is realizing that Saturn here is the controller of the reality, and he wants control of this reality, and that you are chained to divinity, but the idea from the below level is that you are chained. Right? Use the devil card in tarot. You're chained. Oh my gosh, you're chained. The woman is chained in her feminine energy and she's a reflector of the light that the light comes from the star sea of the masculine from his genitalia and then he wears the sun and the moon and he's changed. But she has the antelope with the moon and the reflective energy and the receiving energy and the grace whereas the man is sitting with the courageous lion and the masculine. We have that in both of us as male or female or anything. But when you start 
drawing out the lines of dark and light and you start bleeding into gray, you start going into purgatory more. So everything, and this is very controversial, but everything that is being subjected in social power right now about everything trying to take you away from the dark, the light, the masculine, the feminine, and bleed everything into the middle is taking you away from being able to be connected to here because that is the only way we are connected, not chained. And allowing a central force that has the military and the social power, but the potency that is not. He's weak. Kronos is weak. He has to banish his father and take control, and his son has to fucking take him out, Jupiter. And unfortunately, with the South Node and Sag all year, and still with Jupiter, even though it's an Aquarius, and now it's going to come into Neptune's home, Poseidon will rule. And Poseidon is not easy. Poseidon is not as understanding about things. Poseidon doesn't even have children, technically. But if we move up and we see, if we zoom in, here's another line from that reality and the divine. And what do we see again? Scorpio. And we see Taurus. And these are the leading up. This is where the nodes are coming at the beginning of 2022. But it also is the reminder of Venus and Mars, right? And what's kind of interesting about that Venus is it shines the light this way towards the feminine and then the masculine that way. But there's also a masculine quality. But the real thing is understanding the divine and understanding Mercury, which is the contemplation, the ladder of contemplation, which is going to retrograde with the North Node and square Neptune this June. And so that's why I've been building everybody up in April, especially and in end of March, with all the plans direct and everything to get all this knowledge. And I had to get it out while we are seeing all these great aspects because this is the battle coming this year, is the battle of your mind. Why? So this goes to my first point that was in my presentation at the beginning of the first slides of what we were going to cover today. When the sun on January 12th, 2020 met with Saturn and Pluto, it also met with Mercury. That the next 37 years is the battle for your mind and the mind that understands the universe and trying to get you into gray and blur these defining colors of life and understanding of sections of life out and blur it all. Because it, once you lose that, once you lose the ability to understand that you're on one side or the other and what your masculine and what your feminine is and what all the zodiac brings and that, that you are part of a story that is preset and predetermined in time for moments to happen, for you to make the choice in your head of your heart of not to contemplate but to trust the divine and leap towards the stars that guide you to heaven, that guide you to the great life, or be stuck down here in a hell, which, you know what, in the old days, and during Dante's time, at least that was a defined purgatory in hell. We're in one where they are fucking around with this artificial energy that's come in, and more importantly, this even weirder energy that is blurring all the lines, which is making people not even being able to ever understand this, because if you don't understand down here, you can't understand up here. And if you don't understand the basic nature of human beings, which if we bring this down, and this is very controversial, because this is even people that, it's gonna be very controversial. The idea, I mean, you would scroll out a little bit, that there is masculine and there is feminine. There is energy that initiates and receives. There is feminine and, and there's masculine. And I'm gonna, I'll just go there because you all know where I'm going to go. Because it, in between the sun is what? What is the closest to the sun? But really what is the earth that it's the closest? But, but, but what, is, what are these things? that Actually, it's, it, from earth's point of view, if you take it from earth's point of view, the sun, but what's closest planets are Mars and Venus. So Venus is to our inside, Mars is to our outside. And then Mercury is the closest to the sun, which is why it is the one that is the ruler of astrology and the ruler of understanding life. 
And so even though it's not about the mind, it's about the, the hermetic mind. It's about the mind that is a spiritual mind, a higher third eye mind. And as you trail down, why is Saturn at the bottom? And that's where we're at in the times, that people are getting caught up in the filth of the bottom and the saw blades, because if you look at Saturn, it looks like a big saw blade in space, right? It looks like you at a Home Depot and get a fucking black and decker and go, that that's what he's doing to this reality right now in the dark. And that Satan, Saturn, is ruling not ever, but is playing his great fiddle that's not great at all and not in tune with the universe and trying to create artificiality and unnatural and people are falling for it because they are leaping into things that they believe they should be and do. So I won't name his name. I just did though. But I did the chart for today. And now that shall not be named is on the original form of where all of us, unless you were born after 2012, we're born with Regulus at 29 Leo. And Regulus now is sitting in Virgo, the royal star. And so when you have Saturn and Jupiter in Aquarius, you have Pluto exactly where Dante was during the Saturn-Pluto conjunction of 1284 into 1285. You have Chiron going to where it was in 72. But mainly, you see Mars... You see the moon, and you see, look at, there's Uranus, there's the North Node, and they get out, they're coming towards each other, and where are they going to meet? Over that line of contemplation, pretty much. Not exact, they're going to meet in Taurus, though, at least in a heavenly spot. But they're the midpoint. So, 9-11, how funny. The midpoint of those, so you would go to, nine Gemini, but you would add, add a couple. So you got 32 degrees. 32 divided by two is 16. So you add 16 degrees to nine. I'm just trying to teach you how to do astrology in your head. So you go 10 up, boom, you're at 19 degrees. You add six, you're at 25. So 25 Taurus, Algol, the demon star. So there is demon energy everywhere because the North Node and Uranus to take us to heaven has a midpoint that is meeting on algal where you use your potency either for the dark and give it away to the lustful things in purgatory or with the L name, he is sitting on the regal star in your chart in the collective chart with Regulus and Virgo, now the purity and wreaking havoc on people's hearts to do things that they would never do that are not pure or natural in the physical part of earthly life and getting caught up into with Lilith their greed envy over to get a shot over to get anything that gets you away to just have it now because you want to go to Bali, because you want to go to some crazy, stupid fucking place that you'll go there for a week and then you'll be over it when you get home. Like, let's be honest. And as an astrologer, this is my greatest warning call I have ever given in my life. And I gave you a lot over the last nine years. That the dark is at the midpoint between whether or not you get out of purgatory or not by disobeying to the vows of the false artificiality that is ruling and trying to control this earth from an artificial place. And if you don't feel it and they come after people that try to disavow that vow, they can't get in you though unless you let them in. And this is where you have to understand that all this Aries that we had and this new moon and more importantly, that we are not for the rest of 2021. We are not getting any more positive, all the planets direct and all these powerful planets forward. And we are not getting the great Mars and Jupiter trine for courage and optimism with the North Node on the stars where Aldebaran is where Archangel Michael sits. And that's why I did this presentation today with the moon crossing over, 3.37 p.m. It's sitting here at 7.20 p.m. 
Three hours later, that moon is sitting on Aldebaran right now, and I am channeling it to you right now, that Archangel Michael energy, which if you go into the Dante story, there's the story of the fallen angels that betray God. Those are the celebrities right now with thou that shall not be named on Regulus that are pushing this crazy fucking shit in your life that is artificial. And this is where you have to, you have to with whatever you have in your soul left, which I know you are potent full of it, not give it away, not fall victim to this dark energy that is even with Lilith being like, I want it, I want it, I want it. It's greed. Algol is greed. It's alcohol. It's feeding the spirits. I want to go to drink. I want to go to Vegas and get drunk. I want to go to a bar. I want to go here. I want to go there. I want to get on a plane. I want to go sit on the beach and sloth. I will give up my potency for that. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. But you know what's sad? <laughs> I've never in my life, it makes me want to cry, seen 99% of people that I see fallen for this story, fallen for that life, fallen completely 100% for it. Because one friend says they want to do it. Oh, maybe I'll go. Maybe I'll give up my potency. Do you want to give up your potency? You want to be poor? So the secret isn't about how well you set up a business anymore or how well you get yourself out there. It's whether or not you remain in your potency and you listen to what God says and you listen to the divine and you understand it and you follow it and you disavow those vows that are unnatural right now and artificial. So if we go to this picture to the left, Craig, real quick. I don't know why. When I was going through so many random pictures for all this stuff, this just randomly popped up. It's like Italian comic books. That is the best way to describe the artificial energy coming in with a mask on, by the way. This is just random. I just, like, spirit just randomly popped me up with this. Sitting in the lustfulness, like, good, look at, they, they, they're, they're in Bali in a, like, in, like, B B Airbnb fucking hut. And they just got the shot and they took a coronavirus test and gave the supercomputer more fucking DNA and just got blasted. with more of their potency taken away because their greed, their own fucking sovereignty was taken around. You're allowed to do what you want in this life, but if you have to do anything that gives away your sovereignty, don't do it. This includes relationships that you choose big time during this time too. That we could be seduced into people we know we shouldn't be or still stay with people that we know we shouldn't be with that are gonna, we know, take us down that road to the island of purgatory even deeper. Nope, too fast. When we talk about this artificial energy, oh, come on. When we talk about this artificial energy, paradise lost, lost, paradise lost. I talked about that three-tiered tiara that the Pope wears. That's the, I've got the big dick on the kings. I've got the big dick on the social paradigm. I've got the big dick on the military. that is holding hands with whatever this weird foreign energy is. And of course, with the alien beaming through with the satanic ritualistic aspect. At the bottom, it says, this horror will grow mild. This darkness, light, if you can scroll down or that's all it says and then on this one this is what they're making purgatory look like to you like 
you passed your coronavirus test, you can go to school now, you can come to here. Oh, we're gonna throw some weird alien shit, and we you were you were you were def- you were created by aliens and get you to the falsest tree of paradise on a false earth that is unnatural and not of the divine with a false sphere. If you ever watched the movie, um, what's it called? Fucking um, Event Horizon. The sphere that's in that ship starts from the dark, starts fucking with their heads and turning them into demonic and evil beings. That supercomputer is exactly on our planet right now, playing with you and playing with all the things and the narrative and the stories people don't even know like with neptune and pisces and with all this shit like people are just not even aware they are being mind controlled like they, they, like this is mind control that's why saturn and pluto met with the sun on mercury on on january 12th and we have 37 years of this by the way But I want to remind you that you're fine if you keep your mind with the divine and you understand that the only way truly is the salvation and that's the salvation through your connection to the divine. That you understand the reality of the earth. You understand the water. You understand the air and you understand the ignite, the fire. Then you understand the elements. You understand the natural form of life. You understand the natural order of life. Because if you don't understand natural order, which that was a big debate in the 17th century, in the 1600s, about what is natural philosophy, what is natural order. And science has always been against natural order, trying to find something other than what is divine on purpose because they don't like the divine. They don't want to accept this as the divine. That's too magical for them. That's too not realistic because they're not in their head of the divine. They're in their mind that has been controlled. And now, you know, at least I'll give credit to the, to the scientists of the 1600s because at least... I don't think there was fucking artificial energy fucking with them. I think it was just them being stuck in their head and, you know, still curious of life. And there was a lot of life to still figure out as a human being in evolution as a soul. But when you get to today, why is it that the scientists today just repeat and say the same thing and don't even do it themselves? They're all sitting at home on Zoom repeating the same thing, going on fucking TV, saying the same fucking thing. It's not like they're back at the lab. This is, uh, we'll, I'll sit for this and then I'll stand. So we're going to finish this in like 10 minutes. Um, how's it going in the chat? Are people liking it or no? Did I bomb? You can be real and let me know if I bombed. Okay, here's the nine levels of purgatory. The first stage is stubbornness. This is at the very base of the mountain and is part of what is known as the anti-purgatory. In it, the two poets encounter the souls that those who delayed their Christian life because of their stubbornness to obey God's laws. They are to remain here for a time period that is 30 times longer than the period which they exhibited stubbornness. They run into Manfred of Sicily, who tells them that a soul's time in purgatory can be reduced with prayers from Christians who are in good standing with God in the world of the living. So... 
Instead of you thinking that you're being excommunicated because you're not following an unnatural law, a non-godly law, you are not. Those that are following the unnatural laws, if we were to follow this, I'm not going to take it as fully. I have an open heart and an open mind, and I believe in the light, and I believe that we're all here to wake people up and not have them fall into traps like this. But if anything, you are breaking the law when you go against the natural order. And that is ironic that they're putting people in quarantine for way more time than is ever even like expected. That's the beginning. If you understand social economics, especially, and social, you know, poli so, poli sci, and you understand so poli sci history, and you understand the time period of the 1930s and the communism and the socialist rise, that's exactly what happened. Is people did end up in purgatory. They were following their godly order, but it wasn't, and, and they did. So don't be afraid of that, but be aware of where, you know, who you choose and know when you need to move where God tells you to move and when. Gemini is fast and quick and changes. And don't be stubborn and say, I'm going to go not go against God's law because I'm just going to stay here even though they're coming after me. My mom lives here. She doesn't want to leave. Like These are hard choices. But your stubbornness will get you in the fucking worst place of the world. The second stage is repentant. This is the last part of the anti-purgatory. Anti and this terrace, they encountered deceased kings who were negligible during their rule. People who never repented while alive and people who suffered violent deaths but managed to repent at the last minute. The following evening, Dante falls asleep and wakes up at the gates of the purgatory proper after having a dream that an eagle carried him during the night. The gates are guarded by an angel, and he carves Dante's forehead with the letter P seven times. The angel informs Dante that he is about to go through the seven terraces of purgatory, each representing a sin among the seven deadly sins. So this is very connected to... Did you watch the movie Seven? And one of the P's will be erased as he progresses through each terrace as he climbs Mount Purgatory. Huh. There's probably going to be seven variants, seven vaccine variants, and that you can pass through this part of life if you go. So what I'm trying to show you is purgatory is what we're living through. And they are trying to put you through this whole entire bullshit idea of purgatory that you are not in the paradise already. Why do you think I did paradise fucking, I forgot the name of it in 2019. I was warning people for so long. Third stage, pride. This terrace that the poets encounter first is full of those that were prideful during their earthly lives. The walls of the terrace have sculptures with examples of humility, which is the opposite of pride. The prideful never get a chance to see these sculptures since their backs are arched due to the huge weights they must carry using their backs as their sins get purged. Dante bends over to converse with the souls and learns lessons from them. When Dante reaches the exit of the terrace, an angel removes the first P from his forehead, and the poets move on to the second terrace. So why do they not want you to have pride right now? Goes a lot with potency. Your definition of yourself. And if your definition of yourself doesn't agree with this narrative and this story of what they have it is a false story, it is a fucking complete psyop, then you, you, guess what? Then, you, you know, they put you through, you know what? You need to, you're not allowed to look at this and you need to go watch fucking classes about race. You need to go watch, right? Like you didn't do shit. Like, 
let's be real. Pride, like, like this is where people are getting into all these weird things about their race and their racism. But it's being injected to force people into it. Those that just stand back and look at it and go, I'm, I'm proud of God. I'm proud of, that I'm living a life that I've been blessed with and not trying to define their ego and their pride based off their race and what's given and what's not and then going against another race right now is insanity. And also standing up against every part of the story that includes the, the virus that's a computer virus. This uh, next one, of course, is um, I couldn't memorize all this shit. Envy. This terrace is filled with the souls of envious penitents. Their earthly lives were spent desiring what made other people happy to the point that they would even harm them in order to deprive them of this. I'll say that one again. Their earthly lives were spent desiring what made other people happy to the point they would even harm them in order to deprive them of this. Soon as they enter the terrace, they hear voices that speak example of generosity, which is the opposite of envy. And later on, they also hear the voices speak examples of envy. The penitents wear gray cloaks. You know, as Bill Gates wears gray a lot and cannot, a gray, gray sweater, and cannot see where they are going and then tries to put like baby fuchsia and pink and shit underneath it to look like he's feminine and he cares because he wants to make you happy, but then he'll also deprive you of everything. That he's envious of you, that you have your soul and your potency. He doesn't have any. He's taken from Warren Buffett. He's taken from everybody and stole everything. I'm using an example. The penitents wear gray cloaks and cannot see where they're going because their eyes have been closed and sewn with iron wire. As they leave the terrace, the second P is removed. Oh, you passed your coronavirus test there. You're being generous and taking a test. We know what's best for you. And you're giving away your energy to make us happy. Thank you. Next, the poets enter the uh, third terrace, which is filled with the souls of wrathful. So this is of wrathfulness. Dante begins to have visions of gentleness, which is an example of the opposite virtue of wrath. The wrathful forever wander in a cloud of black smoke, which is a manifestation of the anger that clouded their mind and blinded them when they were alive. The souls in this part of the poem do not shout out at any examples, but Dante does have a conversation with Marco Lombio about free will. Dante also has visions about punished wrath. When they meet an angel, another P is removed, and Dante and Virgil exit the terrace. So be gentle during this time and accept this shot. Don't stand up for, which is actually the black of cloud smoke that's coming at you, and just like let it pound you. This isn't about being angry. This is about not letting the wrathful take over the wrathfulness of you. That th I would say that this is like a moment in your life that you have to realize, with especially Mars in the North Node and Gemini, that you have to be a truth speaker uh, and, and speak your truth. The, 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 the fight is about truth. It's not a physical fight. It's not an anger. It's not throwing shit at people. It's not creating fucking disruptive or blowing things up or anything like that. It's speaking your truth and not letting the wrath take over you by them being wrathful and having you feel like you just need to be a gentle little thing. And I see it in the spiritual community all day. And the reason why they're all falling into this trap is because they, they, they actually believe that they are being wrathful by stepping into their truth. 
Um, sloth, which I, if you all notice, they have something really against slothy energy. The next terrace contains the souls of those, and this is the most unhappy place, by the way, if you remember. The next terrace contains the souls of those who were slothful in their earthly lives. Virgil explains purgatory structure to Dante and how it's determined by love. So by the time you get to this level, oh, life is really about love. So it's almost like, you know, I keep looking at people like, when are people that are really on this fucking story that's been told that was a fucking lie since the beginning, uh, forgot about love and did they get the love light back on yet? I, that's the first thing I look at. The wrathful are forever preoccupied with running around the terrace without rest since they never had zeal, the opposite of sloth in their earthly lives. They had nothing to love and run towards. They just sat around. Especially when it came to acting out of love. You know, The story is trying to tell you to not go see your grandmother when she's dying at the hospital. I'm going to just sit here. I'm blessed that my grandmother died two days ago, to, uh, two days from now, a year ago, during the middle of this bullshit pandemic story, that she died at my mom's house of natural causes naturally but if she would have ended up in a hospital i would have fucking zested myself why do you think or zeal but it's kind of zesty to me maybe they need to name soap zeal um i would have fucking pepped my fucking step and i would have fucking gone in that hospital and seen her whether they, those people liked it or not and i wouldn't have gotten arrested did you no notice anybody get arrested in 2020 for going into a hospital to see their loved one? Do you know how many stories of the nurses finally and the doctors just like being like, let them in, they, they got in. But no, you fell for the fucking trap and you were too afraid and you sat at home and you listened to this fucking quantum computer that controls people and all this fucking artificial energy because it's artificial to not give love to somebody as they die. It's artificial to not go help somebody in need. I see people now when they fucking drop something because they're wearing a mask, they don't want to get next to them and won't help them pick up something. If I saw a woman or an old lady and they were right next to me and they dropped their bag or something, I would help them and I would bring it up. Anybody of us would. That's a high vibe thing to do. The biggest thing of slothfulness is not showing up with love. Love can look intense though. Leo is the sun. Leo is the, is, is the courage. And love can be for courage too. And so a lot of people say that I've fallen out of love because they're not seeing me in my gentle state where I'm giving away my fucking, where, where they think I'm being wrathful when it's quite opposite. All examples given in this terrace from the voices is the air of zeal. Later that evening when Dante falls asleep, he is haunted by nightmares of a siren a manifestation of gluttony, lust, and greed. On the next day, the fourth P is removed and the poets leave the terrace. Seventh stage, avarice. Dante and Virgil enter the terrace of avaricious and prodigal. prodigal. Their punishment is to lie on the floor face down with their hands and feet bound together. The souls have been punished and purged from desiring material goods with extravagance, greed, or ambition. As the poets travel through the terrace, it is shaken by a mysterious tremor. But Dante does not ask Virgil about it, even though he is curious. They run into the Roman, um, and he explains the mysterious tremor to Dante. It happens when his soul is ready to move on from purgatory, and he, who was the soul that caused the tremor, he joins them on their journey. It also turns out that the Roman is the admirer of Virgil's work. The next angel they run into removes the fifth P. So this whole idea of extravagance or greed or ambition, right? Like 
they shut everybody's businesses down and said like, you know, like, like because of the well-being of the world and other, others, like you, you don't need to be ambitious right now and you don't need to be, live your extravagant, beautiful life and you don't need to go do anything, although I think greed is definitely a, a bad thing, but there's definitely something here that has carried on into 2021 of, you know, we're in Uranus and Taurus. Like, it's, it's okay to wear nice things. It's okay to feel good for what you want in your life. Of course, doing it for greed, that'd be like me doing this video and then like showing up and then just like telling you the same shit and the same presentation I've done before and not fucking giving you anything new and just like showing up for 20 minutes and then saying, okay, thanks. Right. And then, leaving and then hopping in something I love and go, that's greed. Like greed is like, I'm going to take everything and get and do as little as I can do. That's what it is. I'm going to take everything and get and take as little. So the greed is on you, not you being greed. They're greedy and bounding you up and having you lie on your floor face down by putting a mask on you, by injecting you, and, by, and, and, and just feeding off of you. Gluttony. And so now, is it, are they full? The next Terence contains the souls of gluttonous, and the poets witness their painful punishment. They experience excruciating hunger and thirst while there are plenty of trees with fruit around them. The souls experience this because they can never reach the trees. The tree of life, by the way, I showed you in the Hermeticism, is understanding the planets. Um, the voices in the trees give examples of temperance, which is the opposite of gluttony, which is natural. So gluttony is like, where's the point to where this doesn't feel natural anymore, right? Like if you're eating, like, is it natural to eat so much to where you're like hurting? Is it natural to, you know, spend more than what you have in your bank account? Is it, is it natural to continue to follow a story of gluttony and keep feeding from it? Because for some reason, you just like getting the sloth of what it gives you? Dante runs into his friend, uh, Forrest uh, Donati, and his predecessor, Banagjugada, blah, 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 who turns out to be the poet and has nothing but kind words of one of Dante's poems. And as the three poets exit the ninth terrace and the angel removes the sixth P. Lust, the last stage. As they continue to climb Mount Purgatory, Dante contemplates how the penitence in the terrace of the gluttonous can be so thin but yet be souls. Uh, the Roman takes this opportunity and Virgil gives him the go-ahead to explain how the body and soul are related. In the terrace of the lustful, the penitent souls must run through a great wall of flames. As they run through it, they call out examples of chastity, which is the opposite of lust. Every must, everyone must run through the wall before they leave, including Dante. Dante is hesitant because he is afraid. Virgil tells him that Beatrice, the love of his life, is waiting for him in the earthly paradise. This is enough to convince Dante who goes through the flames. They fall. They all fall asleep shortly after that. In the morning, they proceed to the earthly paradise, and the final pee of Dante's forehead is removed. I don't know how many stories came out last year saying, like, well, you know, like, I, I really didn't understand because they, they just made it feel like everybody in America is married and has a home with kids. When I forgot the numbers, but that's not even close to true. There's a lot of single homes or single moms or single dads or single people or whatever. And they were just like, that's your household and you're not allowed to go see another household. Or when it came to dating, it's like, you know, it was like, you should do chastity or you should be masturbating or you should be, you should be online watching porn. They literally, go look it up. It's all over on the health of states FD, uh, CDC stuff, 
Um, Canada's are the craziest. Like they're straight up like play with toys, wear a mask. Like they're, 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 they're forcing you to run through these stupid fucking flames to get to this paradise, but you get there, it's not paradise. It's like what I showed you earlier. It's the false paradise. There was one Um, hold on one second here. Uh, give me one second here. I'll keep talking to you. There's a slide that I want to show you all from Age of Deception to finish off with. And um, I think that it's the best way to end this presentation today to go into questions, of course, with Craig. Um, here we go. This will work. Here, let's open. Taking a second, but I will be able to have it up here in a minute. All right. All right. Um, well, I'll uh, I'll just uh, All right. Thanks for being part of the show, everybody. And um, I'm about to finish this for you all. I could do this for literally way more hours, but. I want to remind people that the story of Age of Pisces that we are finishing out here into Aquarius is always going to be a dual dualistic story and that there's going to be counterfeit energy all the time. The story of Christ and this story of Christ is, is, is different than the real Christ-like energy. Like the whole even cross that they use for Christ with the longer aspect of it is not the true one. It comes from Constantine. It comes from this kind of crazy idea, not of the Christ that's connected to the earth and the energy of the earth. And I want to remind people of that and how we're looking through life, right? So the churches become wealthy. Astrologers pursue their pagan traditions, but start to become the old Rome religious neutrality. So like the same way that coronavirus is becoming now the new wealthy, I mean, like literally like Amazon, fucking Apple, like, you know what I mean? Like and the government and the people that follow it are their fucking slaves. And then there's all of the people who don't follow it that sit in the neutral kind of spot, kind of making sure, like, is this real? Is this not? Whatever. But we're at the point where it's no longer to stay neutral. Because it's becoming a religion. The end of the age of Pisces will be a new religion, which is going to be Aquarius, which is going to be science-based, which the beginning of all religions, and what my biggest warning of all time since 2015 of Conscious Life Expo, Age of Deception, what I always say is spirituality, but mainly science, is becoming the new spirituality. Like, did you go get your shot for this week?
It's like Gattaca. Well, did you, did you do their DNA? Did you see if they're going to like live forever or how well their heart is or how well their liver is when they were born? Like it's predetermined based upon the computer that determines that? Why is it not playing all the slides? Well, it does have one of the slides I want to show. So, that is the original cross. That's the cross of astrology, the sun. And this is the pagan symbol of pagan Christianity. And this is the original, this is the, this is the glyph of earth with the cross. This is the next one over, the false Christianity that they created. Okay? Because... Christ always sat in the original drawings with the original pagans as the center of earth with a perfect circular cross and no extra cross down below. That, if we look at all the purgatory pictures and everything, you always see there's the line to keep you down, stuck on the bottom of purgatory. The question is not a question to me. That cosmology is the science of the origin and development of the universe, modern astronomy, is dominated by the Big Bang Theory, which brings together observational astronomy and particle physics, an account or theory of the origin of the universe. The cosmology is the understanding of what the universe is. The idea that cosmology is still got debate blows my mind the same way that you can't debate astrology just being a constant that if astrology is a constant that we can guarantee and know that there'll be mars coming into cancer in the next week and a half then why are we mixing cosmology with well we don't know and changing it it's because they don't want you in center with your divine being and the understanding of the whole cosmos and when you follow this crazy radical science that even they were trying to use dark matter and that just got fucking put off the table in the last year that there's light and there's photons all in between everything that even the galaxies connect to other galaxies everything's connected but the duality of this world, what side unveils the path of the righteous? This is what I was telling people in 2016 that was ahead of them. Whether it was the choice of president in 2016 election, of the people, or for the government. Or for now, over your natural self, or fucking this bullshit coronavirus story, I'm gonna get injected and keep getting tests to go do some bullshit slave story that I showed you in the alchemy, because you're not gonna follow the divine. Because you just want a fucking little hit off your fucking greed, off all the shit that actually is keeping you in purgatory. They keep you in purgatory by going down the road that they are wanting the story. The other story is not purgatory. And that's why that age of Pisces is hard at the end of it. Because the duality of two points of view, ruled by Jupiter and Neptune, which are coming together. So the idea that we are in the age of Aquarius right now, I still to this day will say we are not. We are at the cusp, but we are not. Because Jupiter and Neptune are about to meet up in 2021 in the same sign. And the sign that they both are, one is exalted at home originally, and one is home, Neptune. Both are at home. And they both are brothers, and they both are coming together during a time when their father and their grandfather are fighting. The idea that this fucking story 
is over is ridiculous. The idea that the religion institutions and people are afraid of astrology and all that shit, but you know, they'll follow it. They're lost in time. Nobody actually fucking knows what real divine timing is in life. They still fucking go, I have to go to bed at 10 p.m. because I have to go to bed at 10 p.m. to wake up early in the morning and do whatever. They don't fucking follow the universal time and they don't follow the, and I'm not talking universal time on the fucking clock. I'm talking about the uni universal time of the universe and the spiritual world. The hidden world and frequencies. This is a fucking slide from 2016. I did not alter or edit, edit any of this shit. So when you're in a hidden world and there's frequencies going on, guess what? You're still in the age of Pisces. You're not in the age of Aquarius yet. That's going to be liberation or our demise. One of my favorite bands growing up was a Christian ska band. And Reese Roper's the lead singer, and it's from one of my favorite songs, but a closed mind will leave you empty. And that's what purgatory is. That's what this time is, because when you just sit in contemplation and don't act on it, that's a closed mind to seeing the curiosity of what's on the other side. But you know what? I'm going to call it out because I'm an astrologer and I saw it in people and I'm a psychic and I read people. Everybody who got a coronavirus test, 90% of them did it because they just wanted to see if they had it because of the curiosity in their fucking brain. They didn't do it because of the have to go somewhere. They just have this, they fall for the spells that are casted upon them all the time of curiosity and contemplation over things that they've never experienced before that are not of the divine. We all fall for it, whether it's sin, like I've never done this before, I'm gonna go try that, and the peer pressure on it. But the weird thing is the test, and the, oh, we don't have enough tests, or even the vaccine, we don't have enough vaccine, is the curiosity of like, well, I, I don't have it, I should have it, I'm without it, I need to try it. And you know what? I don't have an open mind enough to fucking look and realize like, hey, you're not empty, you don't need that shit. Like, when I got sick, if this coronavirus thing, whatever the fuck, the frequency shit that they're doing, I fucking didn't need a fucking test. I knew it. I stayed away. I fucking sat in my house and I fucking went through it for eight fucking days. And that's how I did it. I didn't need to fucking go validate from a fucking mind fucking control fucking computer fucking that it's telling me that I have something when the divine and my fucking body and the universe fucking told me. But that's where everybody's fucking gone now. There's only going to be that many people left. People think that, you know, that the world's going to keep expanding and growing. Pluto has fallen down and Pluto is going into the world where he's longest through signs and it goes into where the world starts to shrink. The hyper expansion or hyper inflation of Earth happened over the last hundred plus years of Pluto and Capricorn or Cancer to Capricorn, and it's over now. Pluto's down below the ecliptic, and we are going to see a, a shedding of the world. And that's why I had in my, you can watch my 2020 predictions video and where I predicted with Sarah DeLay, and I sat there and I went, there's a cryptic clean out going on. It's because people are fucking filling their mind up with the emptiness of curiosity of things that they are not from the divine and they're gonna fucking fall and we have to fucking do what we can, but you can't yourself. You can't yourself. You have to trust God and you have to trust your own individual self. You cannot at this point in life Fucking be that stupid, that controlled, that empty in your mind. This is the astrologer's oath. Therefore, following the rule of these men, my dear, uh, because it's Ma Matthias, but Mavatorius, I beg you to take an oath by God, the creator of the universe, who has made and regulated everything under the control of everlasting necessity. This is written in 320 A.D. When they did not have frequency control. Who has shaped the sun and the moon. Who has arranged the order and the courses of all the stars. Who collected the waves of the sea between boundaries of land. Who forever kindles the encircling divinity 
of the heavens, who maintains the earth balance evenly in the middle of the universe. That's hermeticism. Who has created with the majestic divine skill all men, beasts, birds, and every manner of living thing, who moistens the earth with ever-flowing fountains, who makes constant and ever-changing the breath of the winds. There is no fucking climate change. For real. He's talking about the makes constant and ever changing the breath of the winds. Welcome to astrology and knowing the elements, people. They sometimes go out of balance and it's not caused by you. You have no control of it, the divine does. Who initiated the rising and settling of the stars and the movements of the earth, who set up the stars as stations for the ascent and descent of the souls. Who set up the stars as stations to see if you will ascend or you will descend. Because if you don't understand the stations to ascend in your life, you will only descend because you are not showing up to the station to get on the fate train. Whoop, whoop. That's my own shit for nine years, I'm saying. We beg you to take an oath that these revered doctrines will not be revealed to profane ears. but that the entire teaching of divinity will be made known only to those equipped with pure splendor of mind. Hence, I do these videos of truth where you choose to pay to come on to get it because you feel that you have the profane ears to hear it. Because if some people hear this shit, it's too much for them and it triggers them to go away from it. And that's why, even since the beginning, it took me years to get into my truth to be able to even be able to... Some people are probably like, why is this motherfucker screaming at me? I am fucking passionate as hell up here, but I am giving you not my just truth, but the truth that has been going on for fucking, not only centuries, but millenniums and all time of the divinity, which most people are not in the splendor. You have to be in a pure splendor of mind, meaning the splendor of God, the God's mind, the hermetic mind that understands masculine and feminine. And we are in a world where they are turning it gray, and they are turning it about race, and they are turning it about what everything should be in the fucking gray. And that is not the splendor of divinity of the mind, and it is not the natural order of life, and that is artificial, and that is why everybody is dying. And that is why everybody is unhappy. And that is why everybody is off. And that is why the earth is freaking the fuck out. Not fucking because of your car. Not because fucking you fucking coughed on somebody. I'm almost done. After the splendor of mine, Splendors, I have, I have a good astrology mix. You can listen to it. I mean, a DJ mix. It's called um, Night of Splendor. It's on my SoundCloud. Whom an incorporated soul has led to the right path of life, whose loyalty is above reproach, whose hands are free of all crime, receive, therefore, the detailed account which with the greatest trepidation of spirit we have promised you. You can try and convince people all you want. 2012 was a wake up. You can go look at this, sh this whole show again and look at the purgatory and look at the earth and look at Dante's amazing structural work that he did. Look at what this presentation was today. And the number one thing is, if you question this at all, that's fine. But if you contemplate this and never jump into how this doesn't scream truth to you, then 
you're just talking to profane ears that don't want to hear it because they're too caught up in their greed and their ego of the false light of the unnatural divinity. Just because they want that job, just because they want that little fix, just because they want to go travel for a second, just whatever. It's fine to do all those things just as long as it doesn't require you to give up your sovereignty. It doesn't require you to give up anything of your potency. I love you all very much. I appreciate you so much on High Vibe. And I hope that this lifts you up and this is something that you can rewatch when those moments are going to come that are going to be making the weather crazy, making the financial system crazy, making it seem like crazy science experiments, having to deal with watching those that didn't follow the divine fall. That this lifts you up and reminds you that you are not a criminal and you are not excommunicated and that you are not at the bottom because you follow the divinity within yourself. Not following what I am, not following what I am, not following what any person is, but the divine through you and the universe and how even you want to interpret it. I'm an interpreter, but you don't have to follow my interpretation to the core. I'm just a messenger. And you are a messenger that has messages from your angels and from your guides and from your fucking connection to divinity. I can't tell you how that fucking is, but I can show you the evidence, the history, the astrology of where we're at and what's really going on. And you can take it however that you want and I will still love you and I will still give you all of that and allow you, you, your potency because fuck it, I'm going to hold on to my potency and all I want is your potency in your life. Take command of your life. Don't let this fucking narrative take you over and it might feel like we are all in a corner for a while but it might just be the safest corner because at the end of the day, we're really not in purgatory when we're with the divine, but we are in purgatory when we follow this false narrative story, which is the most unsafe place we could be because we're really paying for penance. You're, you're paying, you, you think that you're getting it for free, that little vaccine card, that fucking little passport, that fucking coronavirus, test. you paid taxes for it, or at least a bunch of your fellow brothers and sisters did and have fucking people and tyrants that are printing fake money and doing everything that is artificial. It's artificial money. I don't even have any money on me because I spent my last dollar literally to fucking get the laptop done for today. But literally, that falsity, do not fall into it. I love you all. We're going to get Craig up here. We're going to take like a five, ten minute break. I need a little break. And we're going to do question and answer and Full disclosure right now. I appreciate you all. I love you very much. Felt good to do this. And I appreciate you.